you just found the most downloaded fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. This is Mind Pump, right? Today's episode, we have two of the most successful personal trainers in the world on this podcast. Today's episode, we're going to be talking about how to become a successful trainer, truly. If you want to become a trainer or you are a trainer and you want to do a great job, you're going to want to listen to this episode. It's Jordan Syatt, you've heard of, heard of him before, I'm sure, and his co-host on his podcast, another great trainer, Mike Vacanti. By the way, their podcast is called How to Become a Personal Trainer. You can find them on this link, fitnessbusinessmentorship.com. So again, if you're a trainer, you're going to love this episode. Now, this episode is brought to you by one of our sponsors, Seed. This is the world's greatest probiotic. There are no other probiotics that come close to this one for regulating gut health, reducing inflammation, and just making you feel better. Go check them out. Go to seed.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code 25 mind pump to get 25% off your first month's order of Seed's Daily Symbiotic. Today's giveaway on YouTube is MAPS Powerlift. To enter to win, leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comments section. Also, this month's sale, MAPS Anywhere and MAPS Hit, both 50% off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. Jordan, Mike, so glad to have you guys here. Mike, first time. Jordan, good to have you back. Thanks, um, I want to start off because the way this happened, you and I were talking, we talk all the time, and uh, I know you're doing some new things in the business, and I briefly kind of told the guys about it, but mm -hmm. was super excited to not only share with our audience, but share with them. And so you could probably explain it much better than me. So kind of talk about what you had been doing business-wise and what you guys are currently moving into and what that looks like. Yeah, so- First, thanks for having me. Yeah, I love yeah, you, man. Mike. Like seriously, really appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Love you guys. Thank wow. you. Um, basically, so we've been we've been building a a business. It's, I call it a we call it a mentorship. But the thing is, we see a lot of coaches, more and more coaches coming into the space. People who want to be coaches who don't know how to be a good coach. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, anyone can go on Instagram and put in their bio, "I'm a personal trainer," and they post random combo exercises, which make no fucking sense. And all of a sudden, they're a personal trainer. And so, we see a lot of on the other end of it. We see a lot of people starting business mentorships as well, but with really terrible advice, and that has no guidance on how to actually be a good coach. And so, we wanted to bridge that gap between, like, all right, well, how do we actually help people become a good coach in terms of Yes, learning program design, uh, exercise cueing and technique, nutrition coaching, psychology, uh, systems and assessments, like how to set up your online coaching. Um, and then also like client psychology, like uh, understanding all the things it takes to be a good coach. So we also talk about sales and, and how to bring more people in. But what we found is that most, if you are just a really good coach, the sales often come by themselves mm -hmm. or over a period of time. Referrals. So that's like, we have a business, it's just, it's a it's a subscription that's just teaches coaches how to be better coaches and build their business. That's yeah. what we got. That's awesome. And how did you guys end up meeting or how do you guys know each other? You want to tell the story? Yeah, we originally, well, I came across Jordan's content. I think it was 2012. Yeah. I was living in Chicago at the time. I actually, I have an accounting background mm -hmm. and uh, went to school for accounting, worked at a big four accounting firm, hated it, quit to get in the fitness space. And it was in this like in-between gap living in Chicago in a, like a random, you know, den slash closet of my buddies paying them 300 bucks a month for rent, just like scraping by on my savings. And I launched a blog, like a fitness blog at the time. And remember sitting all the time and Googling, like, why does my back hurt when I sit or some, something along those lines or back pain when sitting and Jordan SEO'd really high. <laughs> I clicked on it and he had a, a video and, you know, some do this half kneeling, you know, don't be sitting in your chair, all these random things. I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to follow this guy. And this was 2012 and had been following since. Uh, many years later, you know, I think we first met when Gary was in the Boston area. Yeah. And yep. I reached out to him and was like, hey, want to grab a coffee? And that was when we first met each other. So I didn't just reached out to him because of the blog and you just responded. You're like, Hey, I like your, I like your, uh, your information. And he left like, a comment. Wow. Oh, okay. So you <laughs> he left him. a comment on the website. Okay. Like, you're cute. And I replied. <laughs> <laughs> you're cute. You want to eat coffee? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I replied, but then like, we didn't talk for years after that oh, until, okay. Oh, you know he, what? I remember in 2013, I was in oh, New yeah. York city doing some like help. My roommate was a co-founder of Photocracy. I don't know if you guys mm -hmm. remember that. It was like a fitness yeah. gamification website app. And 
I was helping him recruit because they were launching a group coaching program. Mm -hmm. He was like, who would be good for this? I was like, oh, Jordan Syed. I follow him. Like, I think he'd be pretty solid. And I reached out to you on Twitter. I remember DMing him 2013 or 14. Great opportunity. They have a massive email list. They're just launching their online coaching. And uh, he was just like, nah, nah. Like, I'm not <laughs> like, no, thanks. I didn't no, realize no, you were Scott. putting content out on the internet by in 2012. 2011 is when I started. Yeah. No shit. Yeah. yeah wow. Yeah. Wow. You were really early in the game. I did not know that. Yeah, man. Yeah. Oh. That's where we met though. And then he, he was coaching Gary. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, he was a coach. Oh, so wait, Mike was coaching Gary coaching first. first. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was you for, okay. So you, and you meet, so tell me how you meet yeah, Gary and get started with Gary V. It's a crazy yeah. story. Yeah. Okay. So I quit my accounting job, moved to Chicago, living in this den closet thing, launched my website and uh, randomly on Facebook, Gary's previous personal trainer had posted something about needing an intern you know, unpaid internship, must live in New York City, must love dogs, like willing to work hard, get your nose dirty. And I didn't have any money coming in. Savings were getting depleted. And I was like, I can live in New York City. Like, you know, why not? So I, I reach out, I apply in the comments, uh, hit up his assistant on the side, go to the, his website, contact form, like, hey, I'm the best for this, da, 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 da. Three or four days go by, I don't hear anything. I'm like, oh man. And then his assistant emails me. This is two o'clock on a Tuesday afternoon. I remember it very distinctly and says, can you be in Soho tomorrow, 7.30 a.m. interview at this Starbucks? I was like, yeah, absolutely. Oh shit. And so throw a bunch of clothes in a bag, go on kayak.com, book a one-way spirit airlines, and <laughs> fly, fly out. I have one suit, cause I'm thinking accounting days, like I'm going to an interview, I'm gonna dress nice for this, right? Yeah, so yeah. I put on my one suit, I go into this, you know, fly out there. I have a buddy living in the city. Let me sleep on his couch in Harlem, wake up early, go down, interview with the assistant, get this unpaid internship and ended up staying in New York city. Fast forward a year, um, start coaching Gary after, you know, Gary needed a new coach. Gary's previous coach had, had moved to across the country and, uh, yeah, started coaching Gary. A few months go by, Gary says, you know what? I know how I want to do this. I want like a full-time employee. I want a babysitter. I want someone to follow me everywhere I go. Like if I'm about to eat a donut, you slap it out of my hand. I want you in my, my meetings. <laughs> yeah, that's like, so demanding. Like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> giving me a water. Give you a shot you know, <laughs> Family vacations, like everywhere. But I, I'm going to pay you a full-time salary and we'll do a, a two-year deal. Are you in, or no, he said, do you know anyone who this might be a good fit for? And I was like, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very interested in this. And so that's that was July of 2014 when I first started coaching him for the, the two-year stint. Tell, before. tell the casino story like early on when you started. This is great. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you know, uh, popular, like it, Gary's a huge personality, right? And yeah, he's already, he's already become pretty famous by this time already. Crush it, jab, 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 right hook. Yeah. Like has had a bunch of books, Vayner's blown up, all the stuff. And um, I almost, I don't want to say I threw my principles out the window <laughs> to an extent, but when he's like, I'm going to pay you this much money, you follow me around. And for these first 90 days, don't let me eat anything bad. And I'm not going to sit here and give him the like, well, there's technically no good and bad foods. I think I actually tried to. And he was like, no. Like, not, not. I'm like, okay. So if there's anything bad, and he lost a ton of weight really quickly, I'm bringing him fish into the office, like that I'm cooking for him. That's disgusting. And, you know, like, you know, shrimp Caesar salads with dressing on the side, but you can't actually have the dressing. Like he was on a high protein, probably like probably like 1500 to 1700 calories and lost a bunch of body fat in, in those first 90 days. But I remember 30 days in, he was judging Miss America in Atlantic city. We're at staying at, um, I don't remember the hotel we were staying at the Borgata in Atlantic city. And I come downstairs, I'm just walking down the casino floor and I see Gary and his brother and his best friend sitting at the blackjack table. And I start walking over, just go say hi to those guys. And a waitress comes by as I'm walking up and hands Gary this enormous like mocha hot chocolate with whipped cream on top. <laughs> and, and in my mind, I'm like, that's not for him. Like he would never order that. Why would he hire me to do this if he was going to be ordering things like this? And he's like, because it's your responsibility. You. <laughs> <laughs> Takes it, to, like starts to take a sip and then looks at me with this like 
I know I'm doing something <laughs> wrong, but I'm pretending I'm not kind of confused look. And he's like, Am, can I have, can I have this? <laughs> yeah. Like, absolutely not. And he's like, oh. And, and I just take it. And there was a trash can sitting right just there. And I took it. And he turns to his, his buddy and his brother. He's like, that's why I have Mike. <laughs> <laughs> he's the enforcer. Wow. Yeah. That's got to be so demanding to just Yeah, watch. when did it start to wear on you? That had to, at one point, because there, obviously there's got to be an early, I imagine, this is amazing. You're, you're living in a closet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you're willing to take a free internship. Yeah. Now you got a two-year contract with a sp- basically celebrity mm-hmm. who's taking care of your expenses. It's got to be probably pretty fun at the beginning and exciting. When does that type of, sh- when does that start to shift from like fun to real work? I feel like it didn't shift until after the two years were up. Oh, interesting. O- only because he was so like his messaging has changed a little bit over the years, but he was much more of, you know, talking about hard work, talking about entrepreneurship, talking about, hustle. And I say that in a positive way because I benefited so much from it. But at the time I was just in it with him, meaning I was building my online business on the side. I was making content. I was building my online fitness coaching and learning so much from him that, you know, probably towards the end, I was burnt out and just didn't know it. And and as a result of that, like stop making content for a while afterwards. Mm-hmm. But um, during the time, it was just like two years, very intense work was the primary focus. What a unique experience because for a trainer or coach, you'll never have a client that can do that or that'll do that, right? You'll never have a client Mm -hmm. that's like, I'm going to pay you, follow me around. And a lot of people, (laughs) in fact, would probably say they would like to do that. I bet a lot of people are like, I wish I could have someone follow me around. But no, you don't. So it's a very unique individual that doesn't get annoyed, you know, month three where you're like, don't eat that. You have to eat this. Most people would be like, I don't want to do this anymore. But very unique situation and very different. Like what are the things you got? So you did this. You did something similar with. I did the same thing. So Mike, uh, Mike did his two years, and then as the two years were coming up, Gary offered him the job again, and Mike was like, "No, I'm good." Right? Like you're like, <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, so, yeah. so I, okay, that, yeah, this is this so, is really so interesting. Did, we're friends. <laughs> You don't want the job, so you call your buddy. So do you like close them? Oh yeah, it's great, bro. You're gonna love it. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's so easy. It yeah. pays you so well. Like, was it like that? It. Was it like selling Jordan? Or like how awesome it is? But inside you're like, fuck this. I ain't doing this no more. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I did. I have to sell you on it. No, I, no. It was well. I mean, at that point, Gary was getting really big. Yeah, and this was a, was a huge opportunity. opportunity. It was yeah, a yeah. major opportunity, and you put out something being like, he's looking for a new coach, mm-hmm. and I reached out and I was like, hey, I would like to be considered for it. Yep. And, uh, and basically, so we started talking and then I ended up moving to Israel. So I was living in Israel. And then, um, finally Mike is like, all right, out of nowhere. So I'm living in Israel. I'm in Tel Aviv. And, and Mike goes, uh, I get out of nowhere. He's like, Hey, do you want to still be considered for this? This is months later. And I was like, yeah. And Mike goes, okay, well you need to fly to New York and, and coach Gary and, uh, and have an interview with him. Cause Mike wasn't the one choosing Gary was the ultimate one choosing. Yeah. And, uh, and I was like, okay, cool. This is in February of 2016. And, and I'm thinking, and I said to him, I said to Mike, okay, cool. I'll, I have a wedding in June that I have in the States that I'm coming back for. I'll do it in June. And Mike says, you need to come here this week. <laughs> <laughs> because and, Gary said. Because Gary's like, you need to have it this week. And I was like, oh man, like, and my mom f- is coming on her first ever trip to Israel oh like that I'm paying for oh gosh. in two weeks. And in Israel, it's like the security is insane. So if you are not a citizen, you leave the country and come back very quickly. It looks odd. Right. So I was worried that I wasn't able to get back in. And I was like, I don't know. I don't He's like, listen, he goes, if you want the job, you're going to do it. So I was like, screw it. I book a flight. Fly to New York. I don't tell anybody in Israel. No one knows. My roommate thought that I was just like out just like for a day. I go to New York, go to your apartment at like five in the morning, <clears throat> coach Gary, leave. And I get back to Israel within 36 hours and I hear nothing for six weeks. Oh, I hear wow. nothing. We we had like 300 applications. I think maybe five people interviewed. There yeah. Was a lot of- there were like five people who interviewed actually with Gary. Wow. So I don't hear anything. So six weeks go by and like after a month, I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm like, oh, maybe I just didn't get it. Da, da, da. So I reach out to Mike. He's like, yeah, we're still thinking. Da, 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 nothing. Finally, uh, I get a text message. I'm in my family's uh, house in the north in Haifa. And it's like 10 o'clock at night there. So it was like 2 p.m. in New York. 
and but I get a text message from an unknown number, and uh, and it just goes, "Are you ready?" That's all it said. That's all it said. <laughs> and so then it I seems very Gary. Yeah, like, this is six weeks later. I just have, yeah. I'm like. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. So I said, who the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah. Now what's going to happen next year? Yeah. <laughs> and then I get a picture of Gary shirtless and flexing. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Like, I didn't know it was you. And then he didn't reply. And I was like, I fucking lost the job. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> so then I moved to New York and then my, Mike did two years and I did three years of, wow. of that. And it was, and I tried to negotiate. I was like, ah, could we do two? And Mike was like, it's got to be three. I was like, all right. Then I did three and it was, I definitely became disenchanted with it far sooner. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I really, like there were three times in the first six months I almost quit. And wow. I, in the first six in months. In the first six yeah. months. It was, it was devastating. Cause like it, it was devastatingly difficult. It was really brutal. And like, because of the demand, yeah. the demand was difficult. I also, you know, I had the travel. We can't it. live your own life. At nothing. That point, right? Yeah. Nothing. And, and people would say like, Oh, it's so amazing. You get to try your life is basically a vacation. You go to Tokyo and then you go to London and then you go to wherever and you get to see all these places. It's like, no, I get to see the inside of a hotel room of these places <laughs> while I'm working. And then I coach Gary and it, yeah. it's work. Yeah. Cause mm -hmm. we're grinding, we're building our businesses Yeah, and Gary doesn't sightsee. <laughs> like it's not like he's going yeah, to these yeah. places. He's grinding himself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like we go from New York. There was one trip I went, I'll never forget. Went from New York to Ireland. We were in Ireland for eight hours. Coached him in Ireland. From Ireland to uh, Amsterdam. Amsterdam for like sixteen hours. Ugh. Amsterdam directly to L.A. It's like he's not sightseeing. You go there. You coach him. You leave. That's it. Wow. And so if you've ever been in an airport and had a really fucking awful time in an airport, imagine doing that like three to six times a week. <laughs> oh, it's, yeah. And then also doing your, never mind coaching the client, Gary, but then online coaching clients, membership, like you have uh, trying to make content. Like it's, it's insane. It was, it was insane. So I became disenchanted with it and we, Gary and I would butt heads more. Oh. Mike is, is much better with that than I am. Like, yeah, was, <laughs> like Gary was like, I want you to come to, like, if I go out to a restaurant, you have to be there and like, you have to watch me eat. What? And I would be <laughs> like, the demand due to that. Gary, he doesn't just have one dinner. It's like, he has like three or four dinners in a row because he has meetings at the restaurants. Right. And so like for the first like six months, like I was trying to do it and I was going, Mike just did it all the time. Mike would go to all the dinners. I think he might have set expectations. Gary might have set expectations better for me than I did for Jordan. Could have been. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I'm going to the restaurant and I'm sitting there, but like, and I have my computer and like, I'm trying to find outlets to plug in at these super nice restaurants so I can sit at the bar while I'm watching Gary eat. And like, is he ordering dessert? No. And like, it's crazy. And, and finally, like, I just like would stop showing up to dinner and Gary would be like, I need you to show up. And I'd be like, and like at the morning workout, he'd be like, I need you to come to dinner night. And I'd be like, yeah, 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 cool. And I just wouldn't show up. <laughs> <laughs> and Gary like gives a lot of rope. Like he's like, he's like, okay, like I'm not just going to be pissed. But like, then he would put on a few pounds and then he'd oh, be like, hey, you need to show up to like, no jokes. So you have to show up to dinner. And then I would like show up to dinner for a couple of weeks and then I would stop doing it. It's just, it's, it was brutal. <laughs> oh my God. So you guys became close to the shared suffering. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. Oh my God. Yeah. Wow. Cause awesome. you know, my favorite part about here, cause I've actually never heard your entire origin story like that. Both of you. And it's so great that we, I mean, you guys are in the business of helping coaches and trainers. I feel like that's what we do the same thing. And you know, the fact that this started in 2011 mm -hmm. with you writing blogs out into the ether, you found him that way, you get connected that way, you go get Gary V first, you train him. That's like, what a, an incredible journey. And you take a job as an intern for free, right? You're like, yep. broke, I'm living in class. I mean, such a lesson for so many of these coaches and trainers who want, because we live in this instant gratification life, yes. right? I want to go viral yeah. on the internet and then I want to be rich tomorrow and training athletes. It's like, come on, dude. Like I wrote blogs into the <laughs> Ethernet <laughs> yeah. for years and years and years. Yes. I lived in a closet that took a free job out of a city I didn't live in. And then I, you know, I just think that's so important. It, it, it makes so much sense to me now because we met way later. I mean, and all the guys and I, when we first came across your content, I was like, dude, this, this guy gets it. Like he's, he really gets it. And it's so obvious. You guys have gone through so much of the stuff that, so everyone probably does this to you too. I imagine as coaches, trainers, they see the success now yeah. and they want, but what they don't realize, and just like this show, it's like, it really was the 15 years before yes. this that made this and made what you guys do. It's such a testament to that. You know? <laughs> yeah. It's such a passion. Um, 
driven industry in the sense that if you don't have a deep passion for what you guys did, first of all, you wouldn't be able to do it. Correct. Yeah. Even for the average trainer, you guys, that was extreme, but even for the average trainer, you're training six people a day, let's say you're dealing with different personalities. You got to, you know, most of them don't listen to what you have to tell them. Most yep. of them are going to, like, if you don't have like a deep passion and love for this, this job sucks. Correct. Period. Yeah. Story. Mm -hmm. If you have a deep passion, then it's okay. It becomes rewarding. Well, that's, that's such an important point because I hear <laughs> coaches like in that position, and in other positions, but that one specifically where, where they'll be like, they don't like what they do. And they'll, I always know that they, they don't like what they do because they'll say the same thing. They'll say, it's not my job to motivate you. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, that's exactly yeah. what <laughs> like just the program design, the exercise technique, like that's one part, but like, what the fuck do you think you signed up for yeah. if not to help motivate someone? And if you're like getting mad that someone needs your help and your encouragement, you're in the wrong fucking job. Yeah, 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 yeah. hundred percent. There's so many layers to what you just said too, because it's like, <clears throat> then you then you get the, the trainers who uh, understand, okay, I need to motivate them, but their way of motivation is like the wrong approach too, yes. versus right. the it's way not effective. you- Yeah, it's not effective. The real way to motivate somebody is, is understanding the psychology of what makes this person tick yes. and learning the way to like leave breadcrumbs to get them to figure these answers and solutions out so it turns into a lifestyle yes. versus motivating. Like they think motivated, they think, oh, shirt off, yeah. yell at them, <laughs> yeah. you got this, you want to look like me, we got to do this. You know right. what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. no, that's not what I mean by motivation. You exactly. Know? I just watched this, uh, this, uh, this great podcast with, uh, and I, it just, I thought this applied perfectly to what we do with Jordan Peterson, where he were talking about psych, like when he treats people for <coughs> depression or anxiety and he says, well, why don't you just tell them what to do? And he goes, well, advice doesn't work. He doesn't just mm. tell people what to do. And he goes, number one, it doesn't work. But number two, if someone just did what I told them, I would rob them of mm. really finding the joy and figuring it out because it's their problem, not mine. I'm like, oh my God, this is, that's, that's what training is because yeah. we don't just tell people what to do. You have to lead them and guide them to find those, to figure those things out. Yeah, you know, absolutely. And that's great. You brought him up. He's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys, after this, after you guys did that, so you guys had this shared suffering, you do show through this. When did you guys reconnect to do what you're doing now? So, well, I was coaching Gary near the end of, of my three years, Mike like got back into it. Mike was like, ah, like I, I sort of like want to get back involved with Gary. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I did the the structure of having like that one client every single day, in, because I was just online at the time then. So you left, and then you were doing online coaching only, o only online okay. and making content. I I took on a couple of projects where I was helping people in person, but for, it was ninety seven percent online, which is essentially a desk job, yeah. and I love the hybrid mix of in person and online. Yeah. And so for that reason, I was yearning to get back. I knew his three years were up and I was like, I don't know what you're planning on doing after these three years, but maybe I could get back in the mix. Jordan was like, absolutely. And then we were like, he would come on trips. And so he'd be at Gary's vacation house and we'd just be hanging out. And we were, I don't know how the idea came up for this, but I remember like sitting at his kitchen table at like two in the morning, uh -huh. scribbling on like a, a piece of paper, like an idea for, the mentorship, what is now the mentorship in 2018, 2017? Yeah, 2018. And a list uh, of courses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and you were at a point where you're like, I don't want to make content anymore. Mm -hmm. Like at all. Like hates content. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he I feel he that. hates content. I feel that. <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah. basically we're like, well, how are we going to do this? And we decided a podcast. So like we've had a podcast since like 2018 or something. Yeah. Or 2019. We thought, oh, how, how can we it. make it fun and what do we like doing, which is just sitting down and talking about whatever. Yeah. And which isn't you guys always. were our inspiration for that, by the way. Be, at, that, you literally used Mind Pump as the, he was like, I love how they just sit down and they just talk shit. Yeah. And it's <laughs> just like, you chat, you don't censor yourself. We have yourselves. no idea how it worked out, by the way. It's just, just, <laughs> and, he, and he was like, that's the only type of content I'll be willing to make is where I can just have fun with it yeah. and mm -hmm. talk about whatever I want to talk about. And that's how our podcast was born through the inspiration of your podcast. And then that's what we've been doing for, and it's just, it's just for, it's like literally we were trying to SEO it super well. So we were like, all right, it's the, how to become a personal trainer podcast It's literally like, yeah. all right, what are people searching? How to become a personal yeah, trainer? Yeah, yeah. That's literally it. And like, we just, but a lot of it is just us talking shit and yeah. then a little bit of that as well. Cause well, we just want to have fun. Isn't that what it's like nice. training clients? Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. 80% we're yeah, having a good time. 20% yeah. I'm teaching you. Yeah. That's a good well, that's when we, I remember that was the, one of the things that we noticed. Cause obviously you know, we've been doing this now almost 10 years. And even before that we were like, okay, scouring the internet and the podcast space and like listening. And back then there was like uh Sean Stevenson, Ben Greenfield, oh, Rich yeah. Roll. There's a handful of them. 
And when we listened to it, it was like, man, you know, none of this, none of this sounds like the conversation I have with my, my clients. Yeah. And we really thought like, I want to bring that dynamic. I want to bring people in to, and this is exactly what it sounds like. There's a bullshitting about personal stuff, drama, stuff going on. And then, but then there's science yes. and good information that's going to, you can apply to your life and better. And I'm like, that was really kind of, that was the most structure that we had was just yeah. like, we got to be able to, we got to make sure every time they hear the episode, they walk away with something applicable to their life to improve their health and fitness journey. But for the most part, it was keeping them engaged. So they want to come back, right. which is what you did as a, as a, that was part of the motivation part was like, I can't just tell them X's and O's if they don't like coming to see me, yes. they're not going to show up to their next appointment. Yeah. And that, we appreciate what you guys do because you're filling a need. I think uh, trainers and coaches uh, the, 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 for a while there, now there's good, there's people like you out there, not a ton, but like you guys do a great job of really teaching coaches how to be really good. And effective certifications didn't do that they, oh, they teach them kind of x's and o's but nobody really any call it you name mentorship that's perfect mm -hmm. I yeah. mean, for a long time i thought trainers need a mentor because yeah. how do you learn this without really having an experienced trainer that you could follow around teach you that kind of stuff so when you guys got into the space what were the needs that you saw that you wanted to fill was it a lot of that there's such a hyper focus still is so there was then you know call it 2018 2019 but still is on making more money and, and on like <laughs> yeah. trying to get people into masterminds and these business gurus whose primary sales tactics are you can make 30k a month mm. like someone who isn't coaching any clients sees a pre-roll ad on youtube and it's like oh i can get rich working in fitness like yeah. i like working out why don't i do that <laughs> yeah. which which yeah, is so frustrating like <laughs> one it's 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 much harder to make thirty thousand dollars a month <laughs> as an online fitness coach than some of these people lead you to believe but it's also it, like people who enter the industry for that reason aren't going to stick around. No, yeah. like, no. you're not going to be able to sustain no. that. Even yeah. if I proved to you, I can show you the but, funnels and all the tricks to get $30,000. Yeah. Good luck keeping that. Yeah. By the way, that's, <laughs> that what they, that's what the good ones do is they teach you how to make $30,000 once. Yeah. Yes. But then you're done. Yes. Yes. We, don't, you, we don't show you how to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> now you, you got to service yeah. all these people that you just well, sold. Well, and, but, and that's where, that's why, and this might be getting too into the weeds. I don't know, but our, most of our coaches and the way we've always ran our business isn't a high ticket upfront yeah. sales structure. It's monthly recurring revenue yeah. because we don't want to have, you know, <clears throat> $10,000 or $5,000 or whatever sales package upfront so that then you can market and say, okay, we, you know, this business coaching client made $60,000 a month. So that's what they're doing a month. And then you think, oh, they're doing 60 K months. Like, they're making a lot of money. It's like, no, they sold 10 packages at 6K a month. Right. Now they have to service them for this next year. Yeah, yeah. That's their year. It isn't yeah. the same Correct. thing as monthly recurring revenue. No, so I, so there's so many examples of, of why uh, this is terrible for the industry. Because I, this, I never thought I'd see this, but we saw this in the gym industry first. The gym industry, we saw people come in. We worked for 24 Hour Fitness, late 90s, early 2000s, when they were the leaders in, mm. in like the, the gym space. But then we saw people come <laughs> in who had no idea. They didn't work in fitness. These were, uh, you know, people that worked in other areas, other industries who came in and saw these gyms and said, oh, you have more locations than everybody. You have all this equipment. All we got to do is put the prices up on a menu, make you guys cheaper than everybody and you'll crush. And remember those of us in the fitness space were like, oh, this is not going to, this is not going to end well. Another example would be Curves. I don't know if you guys remember Curves. Yeah, I remember Curves. These were these little little tiny box, little tiny gyms with pneumatic equipment and they exploded. At one point they were the number one fran franchise in the country. But I remember going in, seeing if I wanted to buy one and meeting these owners and none of them were fitness people. They were all business people. I said, oh, this is a good business opportunity. Fitness has to be passion first. Otherwise you're totally screwed. Correct. But And so we saw this with the coaching industry, especially around COVID. All of a sudden I saw all these uh, people marketing how you can make tons of money being an online coach. Yep. And all of us were like, oh, this is not going to be good. Mm -hmm. This is not something you go into to make money. Correct. This is something you go into because you love. And then, hey, let's figure out how to make money doing this. So you guys feel the same way. Yeah. Well, and that might have worked at the beginning of COVID because <laughs> yeah. we saw a massive spike in demand yeah, yeah. for online fitness services mm -hmm. with gyms shut down temporarily. And so if you just look at supply demand, like there was an opportunity to get more coaches online. But yeah, you need to you need to want to help people. And it sounds corny and cliche yeah. almost, but it's it's so true that that has to be your primary reason for getting in the space if you want to last. And even if you want to uh, like succeed in general. Yeah. So when you guys are fielding people, do you find people that come in for the wrong reasons? And yeah. then do you tell them, yeah, this isn't for you? It's funny. So like we'll do 
we can always tell who's going to do well. Not always. We have a very good idea of who's going to do well from the beginning based on stuff that they say in like an application process. Mm. Like if someone's like, yeah, you know, like I'm a high ticket coach. If they say they're a high ticket coach, they're not going to do well. (laughs) It's like the worst. It's the ultimate red flag. It's like, what the fuck does that mean? You're a high (laughs) ticket coach. Like... And when I was coming up, it was like, I'm it means I take pictures in front of my Lamborghini and I sell people $500 an hour of training or whatever like that. It's for- such a <laughs> weird thing to say yeah. for me. It's like no one, when I was coming up, identified their coaching strategy with how much they charged. It was what they did in their coaching. That's it was right. like, I'm right. a performance coach. I'm a bodybuilding coach. Right. I'm Value. A, yeah. I, I'm like, I'm whatever, functional coach, whatever it is. Like you're a high charging coach. <laughs> yeah, what a, a stupid point. fucking thing to say. Yeah. So like, that is like the number one thing that we're like, listen, if you want to charge a lot, that's fine. But when you come into this, like that, that's not what we teach yeah. again. Like we teach how to be a really good coach and we'll absolutely teach like, cause some people they struggle with uh, like a sales call. They struggle with that. And so that's a, a valid thing to struggle with. Let's talk about it. Yeah. And it oftentimes the ones who really struggle with the sales call are the best coaches they just, they struggle to sell yep. Yep. and that's a fine thing. And we'll discuss that. Yep. But usually the more confident you get in your ability to coach, the easier it is to make sales period. Like the less you actually have to that's very sell. True. That's very true. You know, it's interesting. Mm. It's such a reversal. When we were managing trainers, uh, all of them wanted to do it because they love training people. So everybody had to learn sales and building the yes. business. All of a sudden, I'm hearing more and more about coaches coming in who are like, I know sales. It's like, <laughs> but I don't know how to coach yes. or train people. I'm like, oh my God, I thought that was like, like step one. Yeah. <laughs> this is weird that we're going to have to teach you actually how to train and, yes. co- and, and coach people. It's a, it's a, it's an interesting, like, uh, you know, paradigm shift that we're in because you're right. It's so opposite. And it is, I do feel like it's like the number one thing that we have to combat when we're talking to these coaches is there is this expectation that you can make a lot of money really fast Yes, because so many of the things that are sold, these mastermind groups and, and, you know, you give me $30,000, we'll show you how to make that back in 60 days. And like, and there, there's, there is some truth to it as gimmicky, but it's the retaining part and then maintaining it's like, the quality it's just, of service. You're, you're not going to be able to do that. And the, it's, it's funny because I think it mirrors the same conversation that I have with fat loss with clients. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's 100%. like, we market to everybody about how you can lose 30 pounds in 30 days. And it's like, okay, yeah, that's possible. But try maintaining that yeah. right. as a lifestyle forever. It's very similar. It's like, the right way, actually, this might take us a year or two to get there and learn all the yes. behaviors and the psychology around mm-hmm. it and implementing that lifestyle change and and building some muscle and then losing a little bit, then building some muscle again and this plateaus. Like That's like what building a business looks like. Yes. Mm-hmm. And anybody who's out there selling you on this idea that you're going to be making X amount of dollars in a certain amount of days, I'm sorry, well, dude. I'm it's sure like, like the whole social media culture in general has like provided this misguided perception that like it's all about growth, right? It's all about like how many people are paying attention to you and then yeah. we mm-hmm. can convert all of them and it's a numbers thing. Yes. And what we find, it's like how hard is it really to scale uh, even online? Like how many people can you really give, provide amazing service to uh, within a month? You know, like it, the, people have to really like take a good close look at that. Like, mm-hmm. you know, how many people do you guys have? Any coaches do you guys have in your program? How many people are you guys working with? About 120 right now. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Do you, uh, one thing that we were just made privy to recently is that some of these, co- some of these coaches at scale, they'll be like, I grossed X amount of dollars, but then you look at their profits and it's like, they're slim because yeah. mm-hmm. they've hired all these coaches under them to look at their total. So it's like, you have 30 employees and you're actually profiting yeah. as much as if you did it by yourself. Yes. Well, that's th- like, do you want to be a coach or do you want to be a CEO is yeah. the question because if you really want to be be a CEO and run a company and have super high margins, have a bunch of employees that you're managing and maybe do a really impressive top line and you can tell people like, oh yeah, I made 1.5 million or we did, we grossed 1.5 million, but really your, your take home is, I don't know, 200, yeah. which, which is great, but that's a lot of work yeah. to make $200,000 yeah. compared to more of like a solopreneur, one man, one woman show where- you are the only employee, maybe an assistant or maybe like a, a contractor, videographer, someone to help you with content. But if you have 50 online coaching clients and, and they're paying you $300 a month each, you can service that. Like, obviously you're not onboarding everyone at once. You build that over a number of years, but to maintain that is pretty reasonable yeah. and mm-hmm. less stressful and well, a, a better yeah. like end goal pursuit for someone who is really focused on helping people rather than someone who is more into the business side of things. You guys are the guys that asked for this um, because I only did a little bit of online coaching, very, very little, just to kind of see what it was like. But I always did in person. Mm. And I, f- I would 
find it challenging to teach someone to be able to coach properly online if they've never done anything in person. Mm, yep. Okay, so you agree. So what is yeah, that? What, yeah. what's that conversation like? Someone wants to come on board, be an online coach. They don't train people in person. What's the advice or, or how do you work them through that? We've said for years, it being a great in-person coach will help you become a better online coach. Being a great online coach like or coaching people online will not help you become a better in-person coach. Okay. And, and like you need to coach people in person to be the best possible online coach. And so a lot of the people that we work with are, are, I mean, really everyone, but a lot of like, we'll say people between like 25 to 60, but we'll say even like 35 to 60. And like, maybe they have kids and like, they they can't take an unpaid internship and, and do this. Like one of the big things that we recommend is like, coach people in your garage. Yeah. You know, coach people in your area. Like in, if you have a neighborhood around you, like coach people for free, get your yeah. neighbors involved. Or like just having one or two people that you coach a couple times a week mm -hmm. for free will give you not only amazing experience and teach you exercise technique, exercise cueing, understanding more client psychology, what they're struggling with, common issues, but then also it'll, you can't coach someone in person and not get content ideas. Can you, right. can you yeah. go a little deeper yeah. into why in person would benefit online so much? You mentioned a few of them, cueing, exercise technique, whatever. Can you go into like what in person teaches you that then you can apply to online and why it's so hard to just do that online if, if you've never trained anybody in person? You want to start? This could, this could be a whole fucking book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, no, I mean, it's important because yeah. we have a lot of trainers and coaches or people who want to be trainers or coaches who just want to go online. And it, it, I, I can't imagine how challenging that would be having never trained people in person. Yeah, so. yeah. When if for fitness enthusiasts who get into the industry, who <clears> maybe <throat> made amazing progress themselves, they're good at coaching themselves. Yeah. Their, their age bracket, uh, their injury history, their strengths and weaknesses. So they can program for themselves or someone like them. But it's not until you're in a gym setting and working with, okay, 84-year-old Barry who has a knee replacement and can do this and can't do this. Or you're queuing, uh, you know, the desk worker who, who doesn't have very good posture and trying to get her to do a row properly. Like you're not going to learn that online, but you will learn that in person coaching clients. Yeah. I'll, I'll never forget. I will, this is, I'll never forget this. I, I was coaching in person because I coached in person for like 10 years before I went online. Right. A guy came into this gym I was working at and it's hard to describe in words how disconnected he was from his body. Yep. Just, I've had people like that. Absolutely. A lot of talked about this. Like, yeah. They're just not in their couldn't body. Couldn't even get it up out of the ground. It was truly like yeah. watching an alien. Like he had no idea. <clears throat> yeah, right. Like an even infant. like trying to get him to do a glute bridge, I was like, drive through your heels. And like, mm. he would like drive through his head. I'm like, this is <laughs> great. Right, and so right. I'm like, can I put my hands on you and like try and get you to get you in the right position? And it's like, through doing that, you learn trial and error. Like, yes, cueing, but also... Uh, how to speak to different people in different ways. Yes. It's things that online, you give them the program. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, they can send you videos and you can give them some cues. But like, if you haven't coached in person, it's going to be very difficult for you to like understand, oh, this is the mistake that they're making. Yes. This is the the way that I cue this person to do this. This is like, oh, this person's not, they ha haven't logged their workouts for two weeks. What can I say to this person? Or how can I communicate with this person? But you don't learn this online. You I'll, learn it in person. I'll give you an example, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, a typical cue for, let's say, a lat pull down. We use a very conventional, easy exercise. Is pull the bar down to your chest. Okay. If you're not watching the person and it's somebody who doesn't understand how to move their body, oftentimes it'll look like this, like they'll yeah. roll forward and bring the bar to their chest. Mm -hmm. yep. Whereas a trainer training in person probably learned after years of training people that if I tell the person to bring their chest to the bar, yes. then they're more likely to pull their chest up and do it properly, right? Both of them kind of sound the same, but they don't Correct. result in the same technique. One of them tends to result in the right technique where the other one could be, or oftentimes it isn't. And if you don't train people in person, you'll never know. The guy will be like, yeah, I'm bringing the bar down my chest, like you said. Yep. Good job. Why is my shoulder hurt? I don't know. Because <laughs> you have no idea. Correct. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> what would you say are the top like the characteristics in your guys' experience of of coaches and trainers that actually build a, a good, sustainable career? Like what are the things that someone come in, something coming into this, like what, what are the characteristics that you say are, okay, this is what makes a good coach or trainer? I mean, number, so- it's funny, like when I, when I think about fitness, the number one thing is it, it has to be something that is like consistent. So they have to be consistent with it. Same thing with building a business. You have to number one, be consistent. But I think consistent comes with passion. Like we spoke about, you have to enjoy it, mm -hmm. but not just 
enjoy working out yourself. Like you have to enjoy coaching. Two very different things. Very different. <laughs> very different. Working out, enjoying working out and enjoying coaching. Like not we can, the same we can at all. spend some time here, by the way, because someone listening right now who's a fitness fanatic who's like, I'd love to be a personal trainer. No. It's not the same. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> you know, you're working with people animal. who don't want to work out. They Period, don't enjoy yeah. it. Well, though. it's like the same thing of saying, like, uh, I love my kids, therefore I'm gonna go be a teacher. You know yes. what I'm saying? It's yeah, like, you know, I can I love, love my kids, but then not have any, like, <laughs> like the patience. You don't like other kids. To yeah, have a classroom of <laughs> other, people's other people's kids. kids. Yeah. And it's that's literally what it's like. It's, it's like, oh, great. I love to work out because I follow everything I think I want to do. But like, okay, well, coaching's nothing like that. Exactly. It's more like being a teacher full of a classroom of kids. And yeah. you have to really have a heart or passion for that and be patient. Be and a chameleon. Will, yeah. And, and also like this level of like ownership, right? Like one of the things that... I, you know, I, I recognized it myself as a trainer and I tried coach teaching my trainers to have this is that everything is my fault. If a client yes. doesn't adhere to the diet, if a client doesn't get better at this exercise, if they don't show up, it's not, oh, they're lazy. Oh, yes. this, it's like, okay, what did I, what did I not do to get through to that person that this yeah. is what we needed to yes. do or motivate them? How like, can I can communicate this? Yeah, and you yeah. have to like that. You have to like Correct. that process of failing a lot because most of your clients are going to fail and not get their results. And be willing to look inward and go, where can I figure this yes. Rubik's Cube out? What am I not doing for that type of a person? And I also think that feeds into your points about the online coach is this ability. When you've done this in person for long enough, you can now forecast what the, the problems that are probably going to happen. Like I yes. can tell by someone's assessment with me, the, the, the verbiage they're using, their history of the, with their eating and what they've done in the past, the, their, the way they self-talk about themselves, the way they do their squat assessment. I can tell you so much their, where their pitfalls are going to be with their diet, uh, what their pitfalls are going to be with their uh, in inconsistencies, where their impatience is going to be around weight loss. I can tell probably too with, with the squat assessment, I'll be able to tell if they're going to have aches and pains on certain sides of their body before yep. they even do the squat. And mm -hmm. that's so powerful when you have that ability to now be virtually with someone and they go like, yeah, my my right side of my low back hurts today and I don't know why. I was like, well, that's because you had that asymmetrical shift. Yep. And when you were squatting probably yesterday, you probably, mm. and you know, so yes. that is so, like, how do you get that uh, in, online? You with, can't, right. Without you can't. have seen that in person and know how to communicate that. Yeah, you know? you know, it's funny, before we started the podcast, I think we were talking about, because you guys both trained Gary and, you know, you and I were talking earlier and I said, oh, he's, he's probably the kind of client that you have to pull back all the time. And you're like, absolutely. Now I only know that because I've worked with so many people that I could tell right away overachiever. This is the client that's, that's going to want to overtrain. Yeah, this yeah. is the client that's going to want to go super intense A handful all the time. of archetypes that you could sort of place them in. But yeah. again, the variables are vast, but at least that gives you like a starting point of like, oh, I've seen this before. And, yes. and that's where the in-person in training, you know, you can't really establish that if you don't go through that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so passion was the first one. Other that, characteristics. The next is knowledge. Yeah. It's like, and it's just funny because I see everyone wanting to be famous on social media. And, and wanting to like build like a, a, it's so crazy. I've found that coaches and, and people in general, but coaches, they care more about followers than anything else. Followers and likes. It's just like, it's so, <laughs> so ass backwards. We, we get a lot of applications to the mentorship. And the two things that we'll see that are red flags often are, I really want a, to grow my social media following. Like I want a big social media following. Or I want to make, and they insert a dollar amount in time frame. I want to do <laughs> yeah. $10,000 months by summer. And, and those are two like, yeah. of, of these just backward priorities. Yeah. yeah. So, and it, like, it's also reminds me of the, the fat loss analogy. That's like a client who's just like, I want to look like J-Lo and yeah. I'd like it to happen within the next three months. <laughs> exactly. <You're> like, well, <laughs> it's cool season. That's exactly right. You don't have that kind of ass and we're all pretty far off from that right now. So. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> Mrs. Johnson, you're 72. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy J because I feel like when we were coming up, no one wanted to be a personal trainer. No. Like, my family looked down on me. They, I have family members yeah, who my still family used to tell me, "What if I could get a real job?" Yes, one hundred percent. Like my mom will still be like, "You could always go back to school, like be a doctor." <laughs> like still, it's like so. It, it's one of those things where now I think people want to do it because I think what happened is during COVID, whatever it is, someone hired an online coach. They really enjoyed working out, doing it, and then they saw, oh well, wow! If they have this many clients, then they must be making this much money. It's easy; they can do it at home. I want to do it, yeah. And so it's become very accessible, and people are more excited at the thought of people liking them on social media than they are at the thought of becoming very knowledgeable in yeah. this field. And for, I know for me and I know Mike, and I'm sure all you guys, the thought of becoming very knowledgeable was like the most yep. exciting yep. thing. Like yep. it's funny now, like I'm not 
sitting down reading super training now, but like I used to sit down yeah, and like read like super training yeah. and science and practice of strength training. Yep, yep. And like, like I, that would be like my day and I would just be, I would Engrossed. stay, I wouldn't go out to yeah. party. I would just be like, I just want to read Lyle McDonald's website. I want to read just all this. It's uh I feel like very few people want to do that now. And that has to be, that's equally as important as passion, like knowledge and passion. I guess they feed into each they other. They do, right? So mm -hmm. so what are some great uh, resources for knowledge, would you say, for a you coach today? Right you just there. listed a couple, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't think. Alan Aragon's research review. Yeah, it's yeah, amazing. That's great. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you guys have a, a, a mentorship as well. You have a course you guys launched yeah. recently, We do. Right? And then the podcast also. We of talk course. to trainers uh, yeah. so much uh, through the podcast. And it's so conversational. It makes it easier to, to kind of- Well, we kind of thought, I mean, that was the also part of the plan, right, of building this was like, we wanted to become like one of the main resources of like, if right. you had a question, which is also, we have an AI tool. I don't know if I've ever told you that or not, but you can- You do? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Askmindpump.com. No way. Yeah, yeah. And you can literally type in uh, any question question you could think of and we've probably talked about it in depth or have written a paper about it wow and so that that's, was, that's from genius it. yeah that was kind of the and so <clears throat> even when we created content until uh, it comes alive and then it takes over yeah <laughs> <laughs> but even it, it pulls you from like every it. episode you yeah. guys have made. Yeah, yeah. stop it yeah that's and it'll actually genius. answer in one of our voices so like let's say it was wow. sal who addressed like a, a peptide question or what like that it'll be like oh there it is right there so like Doug can prompt it to ask whatever it, it'll it'll talk to you as an AI tool and answer the question Shut and then it'll the reference all the uh, episodes. That is insane, Sick, right? Cool. Yeah, yeah. I know a lot of people don't even level. Yeah, you're on a different level. <laughs> Serious. That's wild. well. This is. I mean, all the things you guys are talking about. I mean, this is why we align so much is because we saw all the same things and we've we've been just for ten years now trying to fill all those gaps and those needs. You know, I want to say I want to add to something that to the social media thing, because I find this fascinating. I think this is an interesting conversation. I also think the what has fed into this online explosion of all these trainers is also um, the insecurities and narcissism. Yeah. Meaning so many of us get into fitness because of our insecurities. I mm -hmm. went to the gym for the first time because I was skinny and, and was insecure about that. And that's what motivated me. Now, hopefully over your journey of being a trainer for decades, you evolve beyond that so you can help people. But a lot of these young coaches and trainers are still They're stuck in, in that. Yep. And then yeah. this, this reflection of these pictures of yourself with your shirt off, is, <laughs> it's just feeding that likes, shit. Yes. And likes, then people yeah. telling you like, <laughs> oh my God, you look so amazing. I want to be like, it's just, just empty yes. though. Uh -huh. It's just filling that even more. And so I think it's like yeah. this snowball effect of the wrong people are getting the most amount of attention because they are still like a client mm -hmm. working through their own insecurities. And so, yeah, yeah. I think that's this, part of the monster. We see this yeah. like not to completely change topics, but like I am completely changing topics. Like we <laughs> see this like with like people showing their whole bodies, like only fan stuff. It's yeah. like mm -hmm. they get all this attention. Yeah. It feels amazing. And so like they just keep doing it. And so we see it with personal trainers, but only fan stuff like that's people get in this trap of like, oh, I get all this attention. This must be great. And it just feeds that insecurity. You know, yeah. that you because you went this way. I, I think it's uh, it's interesting if 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 everybody could experience what that would be like to have lots of eyes on you. And it not turn into money, not become meaningful, not be real friends. They would see just how torturous. Mm -hmm. It's not just that it's worthless. It's actually torturous. Mm -hmm. It's not great. It's actually the least favorite thing about, or the, the the thing I like least about what we do is just people knowing me. Now, if I pro provide them value and meaning, yeah. that that's totally different. But having eyes on me, for yeah. what? It's yeah. so weird. You want to be watched? You want people to see like... <laughs> That's yeah. such a terrible thing. Well, get it. Feeling that's feeding that insecurity, yeah. which, which just makes it bigger. Yeah. yeah. And, and it makes it worse. And so it's like, it's interesting because I think it, I, this is a discussion that'll be fun to have with you guys. We always talk about this, like with the access of all this knowledge that we have in AI tools and great stuff like that, are we getting better or worse as a society in relation to health? I mean, all the metrics say no, mm. we're getting unhealthier, fatter, worse. Yep. Yet there's more access to great information, great coaches, great knowledge. So what is it? You know, I mean, are we doing more harm than we are good with all this stuff that we're putting out on the internet? Has it just gotten harder? I mean, what do you guys think about that? That's a great question. What do you think? I, I don't know the answer, yeah. right? I, I don't have a definitive answer. I think uh, increase in sedentary, I mean, this is not just the last five to 10 years in technology related, but even the last hundred years, just more sedentary jobs and people moving around less the massive increase in hyper palatable foods, which are very hard to restrain oneself from for most people, right? Millions, billions of dollars being spent scientifically engineering the the most delicious thing and then selling it. Yeah. 
that the combination of those two makes it very hard to maintain I, a healthy body composition. I've been thinking a lot about this and I think the growing market uh, in health and fitness is helping. I do. I don't think it's fixing it. I think we're, we're, we're trying to keep up, but the world is changing so remarkable. Because now you add, you, you brought two things up, right? Hyper palatable, uh, ultra processed foods, which directly, that's probably the biggest factor to obesity, right? These, these drug-like effects from foods are just engineered to do so. The sedentary lifestyle that we all, we now design the world to be so sedentary that you have to go out of your way and schedule movement. Mm -hmm. But now you have society being designed around being lonely. Mm -hmm. So we've mm -hmm. su substituted human interaction with computer interaction and social media. I don't know if you guys have seen the data on on kids and how Dude, little they see other kids. And mm -hmm. you know they talk to each other online, which is not the same thing, doesn't provide the same thing. So, and I think our space is trying to keep up. And the reason why I think we're doing, we're not, we can't keep up. It's too, it's moving too quickly, but we're doing better because I, I just started going to a commercial gym. I hadn't worked out in commercial gyms for years. So I got to see a contrast. Mm. I'd never seen so many people lift weights properly. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. that nobody worked out properly strength training before. Nobody. Correct. It was rare. I'm seeing like girls, guys, kids, older people squatting, deadlifting, overhead pressing. Like that didn't happen before. So I think that we're, we're moving in the right direction. It's just hard to keep up. That's my, that's my opinion. I completely agree with that. And, and I like you go into a commercial gym, you see people not like, I never used to see people deadlifting, never, squatting, never. never mind with good technique. Like, and it's, you see it, it's pretty awesome to see that. My thought is with that is, is that just the group that who would have been working out anyway? Sure. And now they have better access to better information. So they're not wasting time doing stupid right. shit. But what about like, the overall population. That's mm -hmm. my thought. And like, man, if the trend is bad, like I'm just interested to see what's going to happen over the next 20, 30, 40 years. Like, is the trend going to go down now that we have more access to this? I don't know. I, my main concern right now is how much people are stuck with their phone in their fucking face, not moving, being alone, lonely, watching the news, thinking that like the world is going to like go to shit, like that everything is bad, like the mental effects this has. I mean, even now, like speaking of like kids not interacting, uh, research has come, and I think many of us knew this, but from COVID, like kids being put out of schools is like clearly did more harm than good, yep. taking like shutting down schools and kids not being able to interact with other kids. Like, and we're seeing this affect adults, like not interacting with bro, other people. Bro, I, mm -hmm. seven years ago, I was screaming this from the mountaintop. Well, well before COVID and all stuff like that, I read a book called Irresistible. And these guys used to tease me all the time because it's all I talked about for like six months because I, I read all the, the data on that and the direction we were going. And I was like, holy shit. Like if we don't get a hold of this soon, mm -hmm. we are just going to continue to get unhealthier and unhealthy. It was just, and it's, it's unfold out. And, and then COVID just accelerated. Yeah. How much yes. of coaching do you think? Cause it used to be workout. When I first became a trainer, I was like, we just work, we just train people. And then it was like, workout and diet. Yes. Then it was like, workout, diet, sleep. Now it's like, <laughs> workout, diet, sleep, lifestyle. You got to be with people. You got to go hang out. <laughs> how much of our, uh, how, how much larger are you seeing the scope of health coaches start to grow? Dramatically. It, it's, <laughs> yeah. it used to just be like, all right, I'm going to read Tudor Bampa's periodization for sports and I'm good. Like, yeah. and, then, and then it's like, oh no, like. It's not just one sport, it's all sports, not just all sports. Now, like everyday people and not just everyday people. Now you have to know about diet, not just one diet, but like different situations. If you have this, if you have that, like yeah. you have to be an expert be a life in a lot, which I think for a new coach would be overwhelming. unbelievably yeah. overwhelming, yeah. which goes back to start with one thing. I think just start with the thing you're most passionate about yeah, is good. the number one. Like, what do you care about? If you are a gluten-free person, you care about gluten-free Go all in on that. Like yeah. if that's your passion. Go help all those people. But if you're like all about one thing and you think that something else is more lucrative, so you try and go down that route, it's a bad fucking route. Go down whatever you're passionate about, be the best that you can in that. And then you can always switch down the road. Like there's no reason why you can't change and then improve and grow your knowledge. But like it, it's, it takes a long time. We've all been doing this for well over a decade. Yeah. So we've been able to build and build and build and build. But if like, if I was just starting now, I would probably just start with, one type of training 
and just learn a little bit about nutrition and just start there and grow with with do you do you give the same advice too because I, I i love that advice and i we give the same advice too with like <clears throat> social media platforms yes then you have that right correct like, man you can make a bunch of money on youtube and facebook and now there's instagram and snapchat and twitter and it's like where do you start do you give the same advice there too it's like just one platform yeah find the platform you communicate best yeah. on you know whether just, if you like to be in front of a camera maybe youtube for you mm -hmm. if you do really good writing long form do a blog yes. if you're somebody who has short witty things mm -hmm. that are smart and intelligent you can you go to Twitter, you know, yes. like that's kind of how we recommend Just be great at one. Yeah. Cause yeah. most people, they try and do a bunch and, and then they, they suck at all. Quit. Yeah. And they quit. Yeah. What's yeah. realistic when you, when somebody <laughs> starts working with you as a coach and they're listed, they've just been training part-time, they're relatively new. What's, what are realistic things that you can communicate to them? Like they're like, okay, I want to build my business. What is this going to look like in six months, a year, two years? Like, how do you communicate that? For most people, it's going to take a lot longer than you think, hmm. it, which is something that we both experienced. I started <laughs> making content from the time I started making content to the time I had my first online coaching client was almost a year of consistently making content. And, you know, she was paying me, I think $49 a month is what I was charging for online coaching <laughs> because I didn't know. And, and I, you know, didn't want to overcharge her was my thought process at the time. Um, that's a big thing is it's going to take longer than you think to actually have a self-sustaining business, which is one reason we like a hybrid approach so much of in-person and online coaching mm -hmm. to have a little bit more stable in-person income um, combined with growing your online business. I even like the advice that you mm -hmm. gave Jordan too, like, cause I, you get it. I, we get trainers like this too, that are like, you know, stay at home moms. They can't leave. They can't do stuff like that. It's like, Hey, train your cousin, train your neighbor, yes. train them for free. Yes. Cause yes. that just that, the, I, and I'm, I'm such a fan of, I know it's cliche to say the 10,000 hours would be a master, but I think it's so tr true. I think it's so true. And that if coaches and trainers were chasing that instead of the money, yeah. they would realize that the, the, the faster they can get to that number, the quicker they'll get to the financial number that they want. Cause it takes a long time to get to yeah. 10,000 hours. I mean, <sighs> We've done more podcast episodes than Joe Rogan, and we still haven't crossed the barrier of over 5,000 hours. It's crazy. So we're not even, I don't even consider us masters at this. Like, Which is wild. And I and we like still that, yeah. approach it that way. Like we, the thought process was, this is not our expertise. This is a whole new game we're it's learning. It's about reps. It's all about reps. Like we're not. Has, has, has that been hard, kind of off topic, but like maintaining humility with the biggest fitness podcast. It, you know what? Oh, we get more. There's more humility as we continue to get bigger. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you meet really smart people. Uh, mm. We see our own mistakes more clearly as we continue to grow. Um, and then we check each other. Like yeah. there's no way these guys would let my head get too big. It's also what, friends. it's also what has made it work. It's one of the things that is so <sighs> special is that we started it after a big part of all this journey stuff that we're talking about. You know, we were, 15 years already deep in our career when we started this thing, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So a lot of us had gone through a lot of the insecurities. We'd already tried to chase money or do things, you know, like we kind of did a lot of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So when we did this, like there was no, there was not a lot of ego involved. It was not yet a lot of confidence. The, the attitude we had, because people ask this all the time, did you know it was going to be this big? Like we go, fuck yeah, we did. <laughs> like we had every intention of it being this big and bigger. Yeah, so yeah. that was always the plan. But it was never for the reason of like, we wanted to be famous or I wanted mm. all this attention. It was like, we had, there's a huge opportunity in this space to help a lot of people because there's not a lot of good information out there. And then the, what we thought was, our goal was, can we get enough of these reps and hours in to prove that model, to prove that yeah. we are good at giving this information. And that's what we stayed focused cool. on. And I tell you what, what people, as as great as this business is and 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 we are terrible at the marketing sales side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What we're really good at is fucking helping people. Yes. Yeah. We're really good at that. That's really the irony is what we found out is a lot of the, um, the influencers out there that we despise in terms of their content, <laughs> they were just crushing it. Right. And they're getting new people, new eyes, like constantly. And like, so if we're going to try to compete or at least step in this arena and, and try to improve our uh -huh. messaging, uh, we have to actually uh -huh. look and peer into what they're doing right. Mm -hmm. And this is something that I think a lot of people are hesitant to really, if you're, if you just disdain somebody and what they're doing, but they're obviously doing something to where they're successful, like let's deconstruct that. Let's look a little bit further into what they're actually doing well mm -hmm. and what we can learn from that. Cause you can always learn from so many different people and aspects uh, within this industry, even if you don't agree with it. Yes. Uh, and like, how can we do that and give them better messages? Well, you yeah. know, I remember uh, it was about year three in of doing this. And we're, so we're just now starting to 
to clip away and make good money. We just like we're just entering like the million dollar revenue marker, so maybe a little bit over that in in business, right? So we're starting to get some stride. And I met the uh, the kid who was doing all the marketing for Kino Body, who was oh, yeah. massive on the internet, yeah. just mm -hmm. crushing, making money. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I was picking his brain. I wanted to like, you know, like, what are you doing for this and the funnels and sales and all, and we we're we we're sharing numbers. And when he heard what our lifetime value of a customer was, he was like, "What? And you guys are only this big and only making?" I'm like, "Yeah, why?" And he's just like, "Oh yeah, no, we. I mean, we we they do massive volume, but people don't come back. Yeah, right? yeah, because yeah. every because mm -hmm. everybody in the space was so focused on acquisition over mm -hmm. retention. Yes, and we were all focused on retention, so we were growing slow. So much, and we weren't making orders, but we were so focused on servicing the client and making sure we were over delivering on what we we're promising and what we we're talking about. Now, what's dope is that over all these years of being slow to get there, it's so much easier to maintain because 90% yes. of our business is is a mother telling some other lady down the street that you got to listen to these guys, you got to do their program, not us spending. And we have, I've spent tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars in Facebook marketing and, and ads and commercials and other shows. None of it competes yep. with all the organic traffic that we get and referrals that we get. And so we just don't waste our time with that. So what you said uh, earlier, Mike, about um, it takes longer than it's going to be, a, it's going to take a lot longer than you think, which by the way, that's a, that's how, you know, you guys do a good job. Yep. It's like somebody wants to hire someone to lose weight and they're like, oh yeah, we'll do that in like 30 days. Like, you know, that's a red flag. Yeah. A good trainer would be like, eh, it's going to take a lot longer than you think. It's a lot more challenging than you think. That's an honest uh, coach and trainer. So when someone comes in and works with you guys, what's that process look like? What is the process of coaching them and mentoring them to become better coaches and trainers? What does that that typical timeline look like? Yeah. So when when someone signs up for the mentorship, um, we have 13 courses and we pace them pretty slow. So they're watching one to two courses a month. At most. Yeah, two most. max, usually one course a month. How long is a course? Hour and a half on average, two hours okay. Okay. In, in that range. Okay. And you guys are the ones teaching in the yeah. course? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. And then Jordan and I have a, <laughs> a weekly Q&A that we hop on, a Zoom call, and bring everyone from the mentorship who can make it in. They ask their questions. We answer all the questions there on the call, uh, post the replay for anyone who, who couldn't make the call. Um, I love that. Yeah. The yeah. Every month, I, th I think this is the most unique part and – my not so humble opinion, I think it's the most genius part. So like when you have a, a fitness client, you give them a program every month. <clears throat> right. And so this is what you're going to do this month. This is your focus. And we do the same thing. So every month we've got a program uh, and it's some, it could view it as a challenge or a program, whatever you want. But like maybe one month is going to be like, all right, so this month you're going to, uh, you're going to be focused on, could be building your email list. Whatever And whether that's like, if you don't have an email list, then you better fucking make your email list right now. <laughs> mm. uh, if you don't have an, uh, a free offer to get people onto your email list, you're going to make that. Um, if you have all of that, and for some reason you aren't pushing your email list, like, let's get this number of people. And like, we have levels. So like, the bottom level every month is called Mom's Basement, because no one wants to be in Mom's Basement. <laughs> right? So like, if that's you don't great. even have an email list, you're in Mom's Basement. <laughs> Right. And then the that top, would motivate the shit out of me just <laughs> to get out of that. <laughs> the top level Still is down. is also bad. It's the guru level where it's like, OK, maybe you're building your email list, but like you <clears> paid. <throat> so you got like five thousand like people from India who like aren't real people just to, like bump up the numbers of your email list. Uh, so you don't want to be in mom's basement, but you also don't want to be a guru. You want to be somewhere between like we call it like coach and specialist, which is basically just being like, all right, maybe you get somewhere between like five to 500 emails anywhere in that range over the course of this month. And so if you're just starting out, if you get five people, your cousin, someone down the street, whatever, great, that's awesome. If like you have a little bit bigger audience, you get 500 people, amazing. But that's what the goal is that month. And we have different ones. So like we have uh, sometimes like one of the best things I did when I was doing one-on-one -on -one online coaching, <clears throat> and you get this after years and years and years of experience is you know what questions people are going to have. Yep. And you know when they're going to ask them. So like I knew within the first like three to seven days, someone was going to be like, why isn't the scale going down? Yeah. So yeah. I recorded a video being like, hey, just in case the scale hasn't gone down yet, like here's why. And I would send it to them. And 
So we'll have like, hey, this month your goal is to make video courses for your clients. Wow. You should have somewhere That's between like awesome. 10 really to 30 smart. video courses. And the video course could be about nutrition, could be about training. If like you're more of like a performance coach and you see issues that people are having with their squat, make a video course about the squat and have them have it sent to them on whatever day. And so like every month we have a new challenge that they have to accomplish. And so that to me is like, it's the accountability portion and it's like, here's your goal. And just because this is the challenge this month doesn't mean everything else falls off, but this is the focus of this month. I love that. So I have a question oh, for you. Because One of the questions that we get from a lot of our listeners who are not coaches is how do I find a good coach and trainer. How do I know mm -hmm. that I'm going to work with somebody that's good? And we can tell we've done episodes. This is a tough like, question. Yeah. yeah. And we've done episodes like the five red flags that your trainers, you know, sucks or something like that. Right. Yeah. We've done stuff like that, but are your coaches able to post or signal to other people? Like I'm part of this course that teaches me, like, do you guys offer that? Or is that something that they can do or, or because we, no, I mean, they can, but we've never, I yeah, think it's something you, I think it's something you should do. I really, yeah, because think I mean, people listen part of why you tell them like, well, here's some stuff, but it would be great if they could like just see something like that. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, yeah. part of why, when you called me, Jordan, I was like, just get out here. I'd love for you to come on the show and we'll, we can talk and we'll talk about this is because I do, I think this is the future of education. I think one of the biggest things that's going to get disrupted talking about the future AI in all spaces is the formal way we've done education for so long. Yeah. And I think the future is like people, people like you guys and like us who have got years and years of experience. We have all the certifications and knowledge and that we've now distilled it down in an applicable way for these coaches and trainers to accelerate the process of them becoming good and great. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be far better off, say, going through a course like ours and yours than you are going to be spending, you know, $200,000 for an eight-year degree Correct. in school or going through and getting six national certifications that all pretty much teach the same basic stuff to become a good trainer. Yep. And not to discount that there's not value in that. There is. I just think the stuff that you guys are doing and we're doing is really hyper focused on filling those gaps. Correct. And so I do think that it's there's going to come a time, maybe not right now, but in the future. And I think you guys are the right people to have some sort of, you know, like certificate, even if it's just a, that you've completed this course. So I can put it in my bio that, you know, I've got smart. Yeah. Smart. Just so people can. Yeah. And, and I don't know, through our podcast and through your guys's and network, like we're going to teach people to look for that. Look for do you coaches. you have that on your we course? Do. Do you you, have so when you get a, when you go through the completion of our course, you just get a little pr a printout like that. And then you could be like mind pump coach certified. Oh, that's you know? awesome. so do they get it like mailed to them or they get like a, it's a printout. Oh, so got yeah, printout. yeah. When okay, they okay. go through all the course, yep. they get this little printout afterwards. And that's then, awesome. And like you guys, we have this community in there that we're always fostering. I love, I mean, I'm totally going to borrow some of the things you guys are doing with the way you guys are focusing on a topic for an entire we have something similar we call like a coach's corner so okay. maybe this can provide and i'm all about us cross helping because I, I think we all have the same desired outcome the idea is to elevate the space yes is to get coaches and trainers better so what we came up with this was this uh coaches trainer corner and the idea and the concept is we got you know these 800 coaches that are in there that are teaching people and we're going to allow them to steer the content to continue to bolster the program so mm. let's say we get you know 20 trainers this month that go like man i i don't know how to train someone who's a diabetic I'm going to go out with the power of our reach and podcast and go get the most, the best expert or the, who are the best author that wrote a book mm. on diabetes and training someone. I'm going to interview Smart. them within the community for an hour, an hour and a half wow. asking trainer questions. How do I train them? What should I not do? What should I watch out That's for? Genius. What tests are level? Should yeah. I? And then, and then now that gets bolstered into the program. That's so there. the program is, yes. That's genius. And, and so, and we're just doing that and building it through the process. So that's super I love smart. what you guys are doing. I think doing something like that too. Like, you know, I, I wanted to ask you guys this because you you guys like uh, you know, some of the best uh, in the industry with training coaches and trainers. And we're getting more and more of these questions now. And it's new. This is a new thing. And it, we, we were talking about this off air is the introduction of these GLP-1 agonists, mm -hmm. like peptides, like some like glutide, terzepatide. And I've heard trainers come up to us and be afraid. Like, what is this? Is this going to like take my clients? Like, why are people going to need to work with me? Now we understand like, no, 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 this will only, this could potentially be a boom to yes. the industry. Are you guys, do you guys have coaches and trainers are asking you about, about this yet? And what do you guys think about moving forward with this? Cause we have some strong opinions. Adam's on one now just to test it. So we have our own experience of what it's yeah. like. Like, what do you guys think about how that's going to impact our space? Yeah. Well, the, the known risks of being very overweight or obese, like we know what happens. Yeah. We know that the percentage chance of leading to various diseases, we know the mortality rates. Um, so using for someone who has tried everything and hasn't 
and I'm speaking just about the weight loss side. There are other benefits too that we can get into. Um, but using them uh, to lose weight, to improve their health, even if there are some unknowns, right? You'll hear people who push back and say, oh, but we don't know about the unknown risk. We right. don't know about 50 years down the line, how this is going to impact you. The, the reduction in known risk, in my view, is so much more beneficial yeah. than what could potentially happen that we don't even know about. For that reason, I'm a fan of of these GLP ones. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, listen, it's not a, a fix all for everyone. I think like if you're trying to lose five pounds, like to for the beach, you're a fucking idiot, don't do yeah. that. Yeah. But like for the people who like really need it, I think it's amazing. And from a coaching perspective, I think it's so funny that a lot of coaches are against it. It's interesting, it, it, right? It's very odd. It's like it's I thought you wanted people there. to get healthier. Number one and number two is there are other goals besides fat loss. And now mm-hmm. you might actually get someone to help like achieve fat loss in a way that is healthy and sustainable. And now you can work with them on like the other things that maybe they would <clears> never have done before. Now you can work on getting them stronger and building muscle, improving their athleticism, all this stuff that like before they were just trying, it was all fat loss, all fat loss. And they would try and quit, try and quit, try and quit. Now they're fucking doing it and yeah. you can actually get them in the gym and stronger and you're complaining about so, it. So, so with, so Adam's been on it and I have family members that are on it and I've, I've been talking. So Dr. Seed's a friend of ours. He's like one of the lead researchers on GLP ones. And so I'm, I've been really working on my opinion on these. And I think I'm, I'm pretty close to what I would consider like my strong opinion. And I would say the number one side effect with a GLP-1, aside from the potential unknowns, which it's it's peptides, and peptides are not like drugs, so they're, they're, the risk, the the safety profiles on peptides tend to be much higher because peptides actually exist in the body. So the body knows what to do with them versus a drug, which kind of forces its way in and can have all these side effects. But the, the big side effect is the same side effect you'd get with any client who just cut their calories. So what happens if somebody's overweight and then they just eat less of the same stuff? Well, they lose muscle along with body fat because the body metabolism tries to adapt and they pair muscle down. What an incredible opportunity for trainers and coaches, because now you have this this because it's it is hitting the mainstream, but we're not close to where this is going to go. I mm-hmm. think this is going to put a lot of drugs out of business. I know the snack food industry. I don't know if you guys have seen the articles. No. They're actually meeting and Stop. they're they're freaking out. Stop. Are no, you no, serious? They're yeah. scared. They're, that's how that's how powerful no, these are. I didn't even much of an impact. think about that. They're yeah. they're freaking out because they don't. They're like, uh, this is going to crush our profits. Like we are because they don't know. <laughs> they're right. They don't they know will. what yeah. to do. Weight Watchers is pivoting because they're like, uh, this is freaking mm. us out type of deal. Wow. But yeah, this is a big deal. So, as a trainer or coach, I'm looking at this and I'm like, the opportunity is going to be massive because you have this huge influx of everyday people who are going to go on these. They're going to lose weight and they're like. I'm losing muscle too. I want to get stronger. And, well, you know, uh, you know, I need to up my protein intake, they're saying, but it's really hard to do. Boom, enter the trainer or coach. Yes. Who can now help you in this arena. So I feel like it's going to bring more people yeah. to coaches and trainers, not less. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. It helps people get their calories under control and then you can help them get stronger, get more mobile, get more flexible, feel better, up and- protein. Yeah. That's the fun part too, is like the yeah. training yeah. part. It's like yeah. the fat loss part sucks. Yeah. It's yeah. like <laughs> you're going to see clients be way more consistent yeah. and like it, a far less turn, turnover, far less turn because they're like, I'm just getting stronger week over week, month yeah. over month. I'm like, I'm liking how I look better. It's, this is literally, that's the best part of this. Yeah. It's, I think I completely agree. It's going to help the industry and help society. Yeah. I think the, 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 the trainers that are, you know, cause to me, it feels like there's a very divided camp. It's either, uh, I'm all pro drug, take everything to get there. People that, and that are pushing it or that are money motivated by it. And so they're of course all, everything's positive about it. Or you have the other extreme where it's like, oh my God, this is such a terrible idea. It's, and that's just uneducated on what it is. Yeah. I was uneducated on it. I thought a peptide was similar to SARMs originally. Like mm. I, So when people first, like, I don't know, five, six years ago, when they started asking us about peptides, I would say like, oh, don't mess with that because I don't know about long-term effects. And I assumed it was like a SARM. I didn't realize it's like a protein. It's already in your body. It's mm. totally different than taking an actual drug or taking something like SARM. So I think that's why we're getting that pushback from the trainers because they just don't know. Right. And the, the thing that I was, was just talking to all these trainers about was like, listen, Listen, you, your job is to become as educated as you can and learn how to work with this. It's going to be a tool. And like every other tool that we've ever had in, in this world, it can potentially harm and hurt some people when used and abused the wrong way. And it's absolutely going to change lives that know how to apply it correctly. And you guys are going to be the resource to help people navigate that or decide whether they're the right candidate for it or not, or if they decide to use it, how to use it properly and what pitfalls to, to watch for. And so- 
my whole idea of, cause everybody's like, why are you taking trisepatide? Like you don't, you're not like this obese person. I was like, no, I want to go through it and I want to pretend to be a client. Yeah. I was I like, well, that. aren't you afraid? Of and I was like, no, I'm going through it. Like I'm trying to be as naive as possible. Yeah. Like I know I, like I can take my competitive bodybuilder mind and go, you track my macros and you know where my protein's at and then go like, oh shit, I need 60 grams, go slam a shake and do it like to keep the most amount of muscle. But it's like, that's not how I want to approach this. Yeah. I really want to see how this affects my behavior, my cravings. So smart. My, and just, and report back on what I know. It's that way, when I have somebody who, like we had a caller today who's who just went through it, she's been on it for six months, lost like 60, 70 pounds. Really? And is that, yeah, That's so we awesome. just had a caller today and he's like, hey, well, how do I come off of this? Mm. What are the things to watch out for? And mm. so, you know, we'll be able to, and I'm telling her that like, hey, you're a little ahead of me. I said, but that's, I've already been thinking about how am I going to come out of this and what to watch for. Is it something that you want to eventually come off? Or like, oh yeah, you definitely. Stay on oh no, I definitely would not stay He's on. doing it purely for, so we can communicate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like for someone else, like would they stay on it forever? Or so like I think that's what you're going to see a lot of. The idea is to go on, lose the weight, go off. Okay. And so the current protocols that are most popular are you go on it's a ramping up process you start with like a quarter dose half dose then full dose okay you stay on lose the weight and then you taper off okay and then try to maintain you know what what's happened um it's it's this is a really interesting um peptide because it doesn't it's an appetite suppressant but it's not stimulant so classic appetite oh, wow. suppressants were stimulants yep mm -hmm. Were like that's a Fendra nice. back in the day. Mm -hmm. This is not that's a nice that it's not a stimulant. No, but here's no. the weird part. So it seems to act on the hedonistic aspect of activities or experiences. So you're also finding people who are the caller that we had. Gambling. She stopped yeah. drinking alcohol. Yes. Wow, that's amazing. About yes. It's yeah. actually nail saying, biting, pornography. Really? Like people, yes, people. It, that, that's what was so. That's also what made me do it because I'm like, this is interesting. I wonder if I'll see other. I bite nails every once in a while. I do weird things like that. Yeah. I wonder if. Do you feel like you have an addictive personality or not really? I, you know, I have somewhat of an addictive personality. I have like, I have, um, I was ice cream is a big driver for me. I have yeah. the tendency to do something like that and binge on it. Like I'm, I'm not, I'm definitely not the person who can have one piece of candy or <laughs> yeah, one bite yeah, of something. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. the person who goes. Oh, it's in my house. May as well get out. I'm going to eat those calories anyways. May as well put them all down right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, so yeah, like yeah. I definitely have behaviors like that. And so, yeah, I was really interested and fascinated to see what that would look yeah. like. And so I already have some things that I know that if I was coaching somebody, I would want them to do one, we could use it to lose weight. And then I would want them off. And then I already know like some things that I would want, because I know the idea is that you know that we know that food many times for people is used as, a, as, as coping like a drug is. Right. Right. It's like uh, you had childhood trauma or you get just fight. anxious, depressed. Yeah. Like, anxious, yeah, depressed, yeah. stressed. Yeah. And so what do you do? You feed your face. And it's it seems to just just crush, kill that. Yeah. It's, that's wow. wow. Now, that's here's, amazing. I was talking to this therapist about this who's also a trainer and she was asking me, now, Adam, don't you feel like it's going to be very challenging for like for like someone like me who's a therapist to help this person get into the root cause of what caused that if it just eliminates it for them. And I said, well, initially it might, but then this gives you an opportunity when you get them off to coach and to journal. Like, so for example, so what I would, now? what I would tell me if I was a, my client and I had this ice cream binge and now I don't do it at all. And now I get off is I would say, okay, Adam, um, what I want you to do is <laughs> every time you go to eat, the ice cream or you feel the urge to go do that. I'm not going to tell you not to, I want you to write down what happened in your day. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling? What were you just thinking about? The contrast. It's the contrast that would be valuable. Yes. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and to know that like, Oh, so then maybe I can look back at the, the next 10 times I go to reach for ice cream. There was something in common. Oh shit. Yes. I had a stressful day at work at all those things. Yep. And I tend to do these things or, Oh wow. Anytime my wife and I get into a disagreement, I tend to, yeah. whatever by, it is. Well, by the way, important to point all that yes. out as we're going through this by process. By the way. So yes. that way. Yeah. So, so mm -hmm. if you are going to get off of it, you have to know, okay, this is how I was per, you know, previous to this. Right. This is how my experience was here. Here's, here's how I was working on the, these behaviors. Now I want to reestablish, you know, these better behaviors and right. keep working on keeping that consistency. Now, who can do that better than a coach? Correct. And so exactly. that's why I think the value guy. of a coach is going to explode as more and more people get everyday people get on GOP ones. You're going to see more strength training. That's what I think. Yep. Because they're all going to be informed on the muscle lot. I better go start lifting weights. And you know, they're right. I didn't notice I got a little more weaker. More confident. Go to the gym. Yep. Yeah. I yeah. love that. I think it's going to be a complete boom to the, the fitness industry. There's a chance for abuse for sure. Of I'm sure competitors are going to use everything. it pre-contest and people who just want to restrict calories, that kind of stuff. But, but in regard to what the therapist is saying, uh, the, the stress eating, the anxious eating, whatever, the binging, like, that's the coping mechanism. It's not the issue. It's not right. like, so 
you're actually get it, giving them an opportunity because when they then have the stress eating and binge <clears throat> eating, now they feel guilty about that. They might not even be focusing on what caused it in the first place. Right. So now you remove the, shame the coping spiral. mechanism. Right. Yes. And they, yes. well, what's actually going on? You actually yes. might be able to help people more. I think so too. Yeah. I, that's why I, I find it really, it's, and to, I tell you what, like I've tried everything in the sun as a, you know, we were as coaches and trainers and I've done everything that's legal, illegal, you name it. I've tried all the cool stuff in our space. <laughs> <laughs> there is not, bro, there's nothing like this. There is, really? It is that trippy for me of like how now i want to try it just it, to see dude i i yeah. encourage you to just for that experiment just, just for yeah. the experiment i mean i'm only four weeks in I, within week one you'll see a massive difference and i even see so at once a week i take the shot if I, there's been two times where i've even thought about ice cream or even thought maybe i'll go take a bite or whatever with it, and it's been uh sat or sunday night right before oh, i think my shot wow. so as it's wore off yeah, yeah, yeah. like mm -hmm. i have that and the first mm -hmm. time I, it wasn't even hard for me to be like nah i don't feel like it. and then the second time i'm like you know what i'm gonna go try because i want to see my voice i tell you what had a handful of bites and then put it right back away dude that's why never in my life have I done that. that's and really and walk incredible. away from yeah. it and so not strange. feel like i needed more which yeah. is how i would feel in the in the past if i want ice cream and i go start it like again that it's over i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna finish it there i don't have my wife has that ability to like oh i'll have a bite honey and that's it she's satisfied i don't have that i don't have that relationship with ice cream and so the fact that i've been able to like i didn't even want that bad but i wanted enough to let me go test it i tested it i didn't have this urge or desire it's so the theory crazy. around this also this is just we're going down this this rabbit hole the theory also is you 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 reinforce behaviors by constantly practicing them yes, so you yep. build stronger neural connections mm -hmm. So if you stayed on something like this for, let's say, six months and you don't strengthen the connection or the relationship between stress and eating, stress and eating, the connection may potentially, and this is the theory, weaken. Mm. So when you go off, you may be in a better position yeah. to not go back to it in the first place. Create new neural networks. 100%. Yeah. That's amazing. This is a very <laughs> interesting, I've never, and, and I love this whole space. I love all the peptides, drugs, the whole deal. Uh, I've never seen anything that has a potential to radically change the pharmaceutical industry uh, like yeah. GLP ones. I'm also I'm curious. so if you're a coach and you're not on this, you're dumb. <laughs> <laughs> like you need to figure this out yeah, because yeah. this, or you're gonna be left Getting in the dust. Correct. Yeah, yeah 100%. Correct. I'm also really curious to like I haven't wrapped my brain around why I have theories on why this is, and I'm curious if other people experience this. So Katrina, of course, I'm at like she's like giving me her feedback on what she sees in mm. different, right? So I'm asking her like, and she's like, you know, there's something that you have done now four times in the just the last four weeks uh, that you've never done in 13 years we've been in together. That's fascinating to me. And she goes, so I it, I have this desire for whole natural foods really bad. Really? Like, so if I get hungry, I not only do I not think of fast lots of calories, I think I want something nutrient dense. It's so I think it's the the executive part of the brain is able to, to uh, take over more than the impulsive side. That's what makes sense I to me because you know so much about nutrition that you're like that's what I want because I know that's good versus the impulsive side of me. Is yeah, I over. don't know. It's my theory. That, you know, did you notice this happening as well, or did she just? Notice yeah, it? no. So, well, the reason why I noticed it happening because I physically did different stuff. Like, for example, in our house, my wife cooks most of the time for our dinner and stuff like that. Every once in a while, we have really busy days, and she's like, "Hey, let's DoorDash." Now, if I'm on my diet or choosing good food, like I'll just go, "Okay, I'll get Nick the Greek or Chipotle. I'll choose a healthier choice and I'll DoorDash." Like, I don't like give her a hard time for not cooking. That's right. what I do, right? So uh, I have not desired that stuff so bad that I go out to the grocery store Stop. at eight o'clock at night, go get steak, vegetables, and like some potatoes, come back home, prepare the meal for both of us. I've never you done You take that. the like wow. way less convenient option. Way less convenient. I want, like, it, it, I want it so bad that even something that's fast and healthy isn't enough of yeah. what it's yeah. a trip. That's Jordan, really incredible. Jordan's gonna laugh that I'm asking this, but I'm just curious because I, I'm pretty sure they slow gastric emptying. Yeah. How's your digestion been? Great. The nice. only time is if I notice anything off, and this is another thing is interesting, is so last night <clears throat> I did have, uh, I, my, I was watching my son by myself. And so um, I ordered uh, tacos. And it's this kind of like, you know, a farm to table type of place. So it's a healthier choice, but they still probably use some sort of oils or yeah. something in, in the, <clears throat> the way they cook it. And I was on the toilet like right afterwards. And so it affects, I'm like very sensitive mm. to stuff that is not like prepared, Dying. super clean. Well, especially when yeah. you stop having that stuff and then all of a sudden you do yes. have it. Yeah. Like I've right. the same. So, and, then, and then it reinforces yeah. that. It's just like, oh, so I have no desire so for that. So you know? the, the slowing of gastric emptying would actually do the opposite. You notice more probably constipation. Yeah, I know. That's, that's why I, that's yeah. not happening. And the only yeah. thing I have noticed with my digestion yeah. is that, yeah. is that I've actually. So, so here's probably from eating better foods and then having one day. Where that's right. Totally. Everybody's yeah. So here's what's interesting about what you're saying. 
the snack food industry is, uh, I think, because I know they have met, as you can find articles where they're meeting, talking Dude, about. that's crazy. I think they're putting out propaganda. No, I think they're scary. highlighting scare stories because oh. if you talk to actual people using them, actual doctors. Holy and shit. The mm -hmm. side effect profile is actually extremely safe, especially compared to any other medical intervention when it comes to obesity. It's like ridiculous. I think that they're trying to fight with propaganda and... I, and I think they're gonna have to join forces. I opinion. believe that. Like, <laughs> yeah. I've never believed anything more than that. Yeah, <laughs> like, dude. Like, I very much hey, like that is not surprising at all. When did you think that you'd ever see big pharma <laughs> and the snack food industry <laughs> yeah. battle? Yeah. 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 This could be oh, a cool. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Finally, the two yeah. devils fight each other. Let's see what I happens. really think that's why it's causing this division within trainers is because they're reading the propaganda. They're yes. hearing it, uh, yes. this one scare story of somebody who had some it took issue. three times mm -hmm. as much as she was supposed to. Yeah. Do. And yes. it's like, because at least in our experience so far, everybody that we've talked to has been, it's been all positive. I had one guy, one guy who got nauseous. He got very, very nauseous from it. He had to uh, really he lower his dose. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I could see like the, the other thing I noticed right now is just, I'm so low calorie. My energy level is really low. So I don't, my workouts are suffering. My workouts do not look anywhere near what my workouts are. Well, yeah, you're are. talking to somebody who, who, yeah. who yeah. didn't yeah. overeat. Yeah, a massive deficit, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so it makes sense, you know right. what I'm saying? That right. I, I feel that way. And again, though, like I want to just kind of go through it and see it through. Did you get through. blood work done too? I had the last time we got, but when we get blood work done, we got it done just like, um, That's what, six months ago? Yeah. No, like less than that. Like, I'd year. say like three months ago or so. Okay. That'd be cool to see like changes in overall blood Yeah, I've been, work, like, because we work with a hormone company, I've been very consistent with my blood work. In fact, I'm actually due to go get that done today or tomorrow. So I'll do it again. And so I'll have the first, the first. Can I either off air or on air, like, I want to figure out what company this is because I might want oh, yeah. to try it. Like, I like experimenting stuff. Like, me I, too. Yeah, last me time too. I was here, I was doing the glucose experiment. Like, oh, really? I want to just see, because if our clients are going to do it, yes, for the exact reason you're doing it. That's exactly like, my thought process. I, so far, one. what it looks like is if you coach someone on this, you have to really coach them on how to hit protein. Yep. And you have to be very, uh, you have to be very consistent and diligent with strength training yep. and appropriate strength training. So reduced calories means they're probably not going to be able to handle as much volume or right. whatever. And you have to hit protein intake. Otherwise, what's going to happen is just like what happens. I think you're also going to be, you, it's going to become it. even more important to know how to modify intensity. Of course. Mm -hmm. Because you if calories. you are uh, the person who loves F45 or Orange Theory yes. type of class, and yes. then you also take this uh, recipe for super Injury, muscle loss over quick. Yeah. Or, and so- yeah, there's going to be, there's there's definitely going to be some things. That's why I think it's fun as a coach to go through it because now I'm going to be able to go like, okay, these are the potential pitfalls. Yep. This is the type of person that's going to gravitate towards this. Like, so yeah, no, I can see a lot, but it's, it's interesting, dude. I just, I've never, I've never experienced something like that's been this powerful. That's like, incredible. I know. And, I and to not... Like I am very open to eating some garbage or what, like if I feel it, yeah. like, and it's just not there. It is, there is no desire. It's weird to be that. around him to see it. He'll eat like nothing. Yeah. I'm like, what are you doing? And not, <laughs> and not feel, yeah, it's, it's a trip. Yeah, I'll I go to a restaurant, he'll eat like <laughs> appetizer. <Yeah. laughs> What's going on over here? That's not, I've never, so I told yeah, these guys, so part of this too, I'm trying to be introspective too, right? I'm trying to like, you know, hey, maybe I still have childhood trauma or things I was coping or, so I do have this thing right now. I was telling Sal this the other day, like, so I have an autoimmune disease. I have what is psoriasis. Okay, I have that. And I've suffered from it forever. Um, I've Do done you every- huh? you, have, you have a bad? Yeah. Do you really? Yeah, yeah, I have really, I'll show you on my side. Oh, got it, okay. yeah, I have, I have, a, I have really, uh, my shin is, is getting pretty good right now because I, I've done, I mean, I've done stem cells. I've done oh, every wow. intervention you could think of, every cream, every steroid, everything to try and, 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 and you know, get a handle on it. And it's the best it's ever been right now. Now, obviously that's because I'm in this crazy low calorie diet. Right, that's, right, right. That, that's so your why. gut's like- right. Yeah, so my, my gut is taking a break. So now I have this new theory like, oh my God, because my psoriasis came on when I was 24, 25 is when it first showed up and mm -hmm. then it's never gone away. And I've thought it was, you know, I've done everything too. Like I've done the carnivore diet, I've gone vegan. I thought, you know, is it a, is it a certain food I'm doing that's doing it? And now I'm at like, did I train myself so fucking well for so long to be the big buff guy that even though I was eating healthy foods, uh, I was just stressing my digestive system so much with just the amount yeah. I was eating to be big yeah. that my body really wants to be this 180, 190, lanky kind of thin looking dude. Yeah. And I've resisted that for so long and I've justified it because I've been eating so good and that this is bringing me back to more home. And I'm just kind of, that's what part of also why I'm allowing it happen is because 
what happens if my psoriasis completely goes away or gets really, really good and I land Would in Would you rather home? be jacked with psoriasis or, <laughs> yeah, or, or, or lanky without yeah, it? Yeah, and I'd, I would rather be no psoriasis than the lanky guy because yeah, I'm okay with that, yeah, you know? for sure. So I definitely feel like I moved past those young childhood insecurities around it. Like yeah. I'm totally open to being that guy now but I didn't realize that I had done such a good job of training double meat and I'll have two of those. And, <laughs> you know, being yeah. that guy that, uh, that, oh my God, what if I just allow myself to eat when I'm hungry, yeah. make good, healthy choices? Where does my body land? And maybe that's a lot smaller than what I'm currently at. And so I'm being- What an amazing thing to learn just from this experiment. I, dude, like, I just- It's weird to watch. Yeah, it's, it's weird to watch. It's, it's, it's a, just a good thing you're not like starting dating now. So you get like an appetizer. I'm just, I'm good. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> they would be like, what the fuck? Yeah, Katrina, yeah, Katrina does really chip out that, that our, yeah. our, our meal, our plates, I think I have a smaller plate than she does. And that's another thing too. I've never- I've never not finished a plate of food. That happens now a lot. He gives it I'm, to me and Justin now. <laughs> <laughs> Finishes food for him now. <laughs> That's hilarious. It's cool though. It's a it's a it's been a fun experiment. I'll definitely set you up yeah. so you can I go think it's it. good that coaches hear that just from experimentation part. Like yes. you you've done carnivore. Like I how can you know you're right. If you've never tried what your clients are going yeah. through, and how otherwise you, you just adopt somebody else's Ex bullshit 100%. propaganda. Yeah. Yes, because you're you're the carnivore guy, so you're so pro it, so you're gonna shit on everybody else's things. Yes. So, oh no, I'm gonna I'm gonna go agree with that guy. Why? Have you done it? Or yeah. have you... stop? You exactly. know what I'm saying? I've yeah. I always have said that I think it's so good for coaches and trainers to experiment with all those things. Yes. You know, and, Tra and training style too. Yes. Yes. A hundred percent. Yes. Mm -hmm. you, there's there's a difference between knowing and knowing. You know what I mean? And knowing yes. is when you experience it and then you can speak to it yeah. for sure. Yeah. When, when trainers and coaches work with you guys, how long do they typically stay? Or do you, do they stay with you for a long period of time as they continue to build? The ones who do the best stay with us for, they've, we have people been there three, four or five years. That's at this awesome. Point. Yeah. That's such a testament. Wow. Yeah. To, it's, it's been crazy because there are some people in there who are like, they started off, they like hadn't been a coach before. They like were working as like Chris Gates. Like, what was he? What's his main job? He's still he still in, has other in job. education, like administration education. <clears throat> he is absolutely fucking dominant. Starting it from scratch, nothing. Rachel Schwartz is another one. Eric Roberts, Sean Casey, all these people who like started from scratch and like are now helping. It, it's funny. Some of them have big fitness audiences, and some of them have tiny audiences but crush it. Yeah. That for me is my favorite because mm -hmm. a lot of people have this idea that you need to have hundreds of thousands or millions That's of followers. It's like right. mm -hmm. you yeah. have a small number of people, but they love you and they'll buy everything that you have and they'll be your clients forever. So it's, I mean, like we've had some people who are like in and out, but I, the people who are the most successful stay in it for a long time because from the beginning, we're honest. We're like, it's going to be a while. Like mm -hmm. this isn't. Well, and the way you guys have structured it, it seems like, it, I mean, I would, if I was one of your your trainers, I would look at the value add every month of like, I'm learning something. Yes. I'm learning and growing because I have access to you guys coaching and training me, which I mean, I'm what, 20 years in this and I'm still learning. So it's like yes. the value of having somebody who's mm -hmm. been there and done it for much longer than me and the access to that for a minimal monthly payment to me, if I'm already running a business, that's like, that's like the electricity bill. It's just yes. a, a must have, you know what I'm saying? You guys have ambitions of, of just continuing to grow this to get more and more coaches and trainers under you guys and having other people help you guys. Cause that's going to be tough to scale at some point, I would imagine. Yeah. I, you know, I don't know that we've talked about it directly. I feel like we're pretty on the same page with not wanting it to be so big that it becomes Correct. something that we don't enjoy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I actually found that with my one on one coaching over the years is yeah. kind of in peak Gary time, 2016, 2017. I got to the point where I was burnt out with one on one online coaching. Happens to trainers in the gym as well because mm -hmm. you have too many clients. Yep. But by reducing client load to a more manageable level, I fell in love with it again, you would say. Um, same thing here. Like if it got to a point where we needed to be making so many hires and having, yeah. you know, daily meetings and, you know, yeah. I hate that shit. Not, not as interesting. <clears throat> I, I don't want to be a manager. We don't want to be managers. Like we're okay with a smaller group that we can manage and enjoy. The impact. Yeah. It's, yeah. that's just like, we're, I'm not, we're so blessed that we get to do what we do and like, we love what we do. I wouldn't like want to change that. I wouldn't want to feel like I have to do something there's, like there's also like a, and you guys experience this because you help so many coaches with the podcast is you're not just helping them. You're helping everyone who they yes, end up helping. Exactly. Yeah. That was so, the idea. It's the ripple in a pond of like, you know, because even someone who's working with clients in person is having a profound effect on each of those individuals. Yes. And if you're helping that person be better, like it just, uh, 
it's exponential. I think no. the only way to change the industry is through the coaches and trainers. Yeah, I don't true. think you can change it from the outside. Yeah. It has to mm -hmm. it has to start from the inside. Yeah, because they're the ones influencing everybody, yeah. and, and like you said, they're going to they make the real them. impact. So are you both? You guys are not. You guys, how often do you guys see each other in person? Because you guys don't live. Just talking about that. Yeah, it's been like ten months. What? Yeah. Wow. Like, wow. Rarely see each other in person at this point. Yeah. Wow. But it's great because like we talk every day, multiple times a day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, like we yeah once a year at this point, which is crazy because we used to see each other every day for years do yeah. you have tra trainers and coaches worldwide or is it just us all over the world wow. yeah all over, yeah it's awesome we have like this a couple people in australia like during the q a they'll be like it's three in the morning and we're here like you're <laughs> wow. a savage that's like, awesome <laughs> it's <laughs> crazy like the, it's a great group of coaches who the main thing is they want to be a good coach and like so it's just awesome it's also like nostalgic because like I see myself in a lot of these younger of coaches or like even these like 52 year old coaches who are just really excited about learning. It's not people. Tracy Townsend. Yeah. Another amazing example. Like it, it's not people who are just trying. It's not the high ticket. It's not the make as much money as possible. It's not like I'm going to cold DM 50 people a day bullshit. It's like. How can I help people? Right. Like that's right. it. It's just in their passion. Real impact. Yes. Real impact. And, and that's sustainable. Well, you, looking back now, right? Because you guys like us, you've done so much in the space and and been a part and grown every kind of medium to grow your business. If you were like, at, you know, starting completely over, like are there things that you would be like, oh, I would do this. This is how I would start now because so much has changed. Like I would focus on this and then this and that. Would you ever think about that? Like if I was a coach and trainer that and with Constantly. that model. Okay. Tell me what, give me, give me some ideas of what you guys would do differently. You know, what's funny is one thing that I think almost everyone would do different, but I would do the same is focus on website yep. email list first. Same. Oh, dude, same. that's hella funny you say that. Be same. Because yeah. in email the social media era, yeah. like, you know, you don't want to build your house on someone else's lawn. Yep. Instagram could change tomorrow. I remember when Facebook business pages lost their reach dramatically. Oh, yeah. And instead of reaching 80, 90% of your audience, you're reaching less than 5% of your audience. Sal's been kicked off of Instagram twice now. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. They're they're only, hey, now. By the way, the only fitness off. influencer to be kicked off Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Banned yeah. permanently. Yeah. Right. Imagine if we yeah. built our whole business on that. We'd be fucked. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Website email list, you're going to have access. Even if you get kicked off of an email service provider, you still have access to all of those emails. Yes. Yeah. Switch email service providers, you can reach them, you know, 50% yeah. at least are going to be at least seeing the email, whether they click it or not. But having access to your audience is a big thing. So, you know, there's the flash and the fame of growing social media rapidly, but you learn so much by writing long form articles. You have the ability to SEO. So podcast doesn't have a ton, you know, Facebook, Instagram have basically none, but YouTube and articles right now. Yeah type a question into Google, I'm still getting traffic on articles I wrote in 2013, 2014, yeah. 2015. Wow. That organic reach for years is huge. Let me tell you why that's such awesome advice and so aligned so with how well we think. First of all, uh, when I'm asked, what's the biggest mistake you guys ever made in Mind Pump? The first answer I always say is that, we fucked up and actually thought email was dead the first two years. Okay. Real really? talk. Real no. talk. What year was this? Well, this is, uh, what, this is uh, 10 <coughs> well, years ago. So or years, seven years, seven, seven eight years ago. Yes, okay. Years, when we years. first got this, we thought email, email was, was dead. dead. We thought that the future was social media. No one's going to use email anymore. Everyone's going <laughs> to communicate through DMs and social media. So why should we build an email list? Okay. The, we learned that lesson. We had these ladies come in. I'll never forget this. Uh, and they had this uh, cauliflower uh, pizza, pizza, pizza company. Never even heard of them. Never heard of them whatsoever. And they're like, and I was, I'm at, I always love to ask behind the scenes business questions like, you know, how much revenue you make? Where's your best medium? Let's not. And they're like, oh, email. Like we send out, if we, if we need to build revenue, we send one email out and we'll generate about a million dollars. Like, Shut the f oh And I'm like, I've never yeah. heard of you before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you can send out one no email and, and yeah. generate a million dollars and you have like 5,000 Instagram followers. I'm like, what? That's crazy. And like right away, all of us looked at each other like, uh, yeah, we fucked up. We're so let's wrong. go fix that. <laughs> and then the other thing was, and this is to your point about long form, like blogs and stuff like that and SEO is, and that's the long game. Like, so yes. for, you know, nine years now, we have been paying, uh, you know, lots of bloggers to write five to seven blogs every week for years. You have? Uh, yes. Uh, it never stopped. Oh, so Smart. genius. And so, <laughs> and, so and, but it took a very long time. But now that's why I said that 90% so of smart. our traffic comes from organic traffic. And let yeah. me tell you, a lead that comes from an article that we had written eight years ago on fat loss or whatever it was, that is great free information that leads to another link, which has got a free YouTube video or something else on it that then leads to a free guide that now comes out is 
a way hotter lead yes. and conversion rate yes. than some Instagram viral video. Yeah, a reel that went nuts or something. 100%. So I yeah. love that advice. And I think a lot of people don't understand that. And it's a it's a slower, longer game. Yep. And it takes a while to build that. But let me tell you, if you stick with it and you spend time doing it, it pays off big time. So The other thing about that is... I can guarantee you 99% of the people who hear that will not do it. I know. It's so yeah. sad. They just won't yeah. do it. Listen, yeah. I had- Because it's not working sexy. time. Yes. Listen, yes. I, I did a podcast, I don't know, three years ago, and I did it. I, it I've been quoted so many times on this that they, to the point where they made fun of me. It's probably had the hundreds man. of millions of hits. If I go on Google right now and Google in, it's, a, it's, the, it's about the journey or something like that. You'll yeah. see t-shirts. People have made t-shirts. Oh, really? I swear to God. <laughs> it made us nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay? It did nothing except for people who be like, oh, I love the journey. It's all about the journey. <laughs> Dude, yeah. Shaq yeah. reposted it. Yeah. 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 Shaquille O'Neal reposted it. it. Like, on, it is, yeah. Yeah. What you sweet. said is everything. Yes. So people, you're right. 99% of people, they just oh, do whatever. It. They're done. They well, do you it. know what? Again, it's 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 the slow game. You yeah. are not going to go write 10 blogs and get $10,000 in the next six months or even year. Correct. You're going to write 10 of them. It's not the slow game. It's the game. There's yes, no fast game. Yeah. The, the, the fast games that you've seen don't exist. And, and the one in a million is so like one in a million. Hand, yeah. You know, it's funny. I've never seen anyone. And I know we know a lot of people, especially because we grew up with people. I've never seen anyone who like really invested in SEO, the long game, who's fallen off, who's like lost their business. It's like the ultimate anti-fragile business. Right. Whereas I've seen so many people go viral very quickly <laughs> yeah. and, and disappear. then gone yep. and they lose it all. It's like, Long form SEO content is the ultimate anti fragile business. So true. Yeah, 100%. Such good advice. Okay, so we've got you would website, email, website, website, email list, blog, white paper type stuff, getting out on there. Okay, those are first steps. Anything else? What's next in, in your, your steps of like what I'm going to do to build this thing? I think for like someone who's new to coaching, I think you shouldn't be presenting yourself as an expert. I think it's a very <clears throat> bad idea. I think documenting your own journey with your own fitness authenticity is a really great opportunity for people to get used to number one, making more content and just connecting with people um, in terms like, and also I should have mentioned like you should fucking study, like get books, but like we, we know that already, mm -hmm. but like in terms of presenting your information, I think you should use yourself as a case study, almost like you are right now. Yeah. Like use yourself as a case study and document it, present it to people. Don't, just because you're like getting your ACE certification doesn't make you an expert. Like yeah. you're fucking not, right? Yeah. It's like, so I think stop trying. And I think the more you try and present yourself as an expert, the more imposter syndrome you'll have. It's like, just present yourself as a student. And like, this is what you're doing. This is what you're working on. I think starting from that perspective, especially with social media posting will be super helpful. Uh, I think Instagram is full. I posted that just like a week ago. ago. I don't know if you saw that in my story. I said like Instagram is full of students pretending to be teachers. Mm, That's yep. literally what it is. Everybody thinks that they're an expert. It's like, dude, you've been doing this for two years. Look, yeah. the, most, the, the most effective trainers aren't the ones that know everything. They're the ones that the clients trust. Yes. And where does trust come from? Uh, honesty, vulnerability, being real. Yep. If they trust you, then they're more likely to take your advice and follow your guidance. If they think you know everything and you're perfect, actually, reality is probably less likely yes. to take your advice. Where in the order does this fall? Because I actually just talked about you guys. Um, we just got back from a, a big conference for a bunch of trainers and stuff like that out in Florida. And I, I use you guys as an example all the time. Thank you, man. And I use it when I say, if I was if I didn't get blessed with these guys, I said, I would never be naive enough to go like, I'm going to go be a mind pump podcast. Like I would be self-aware enough to go, there's something special there. I'm probably don't, I'm never going to build it or get lucky enough to find three people like that. So I'm not going to waste my time. And I use the way you guys built a podcasting community as how I would do it. Servicing your clients. Yeah, I think, and you you did such a good job of, and I think this is very important for a couple of reasons now. I think because we're in this digital age of being disconnected so much, that community has become more important. Mm -hmm. And so having, you know, a Facebook forum or a platform that you get all of your, even if you only got 10 people, yep. but you've got 10 people you're helping and servicing. And even if I have a podcast that only 10 people are listening to, I'm being able to put out this digital content that will live forever that those people now can get value from and then can share to other people. And I would just grow it out like that to eventually where that 10 people turns into 50 people and then yes. 100 people. And I've mm -hmm. got this strong community and I don't care that only 100 people or 1,000 people are listening to my podcast, but I'm doing a great job of servicing them that's so a, well. That's a great question, mm -hmm. Adam. Because like, you guys have a very, very good community. Like you, your community loves you guys, is loyal to you guys. If they talk to us and they're with it, that's like, that's what we hear. What are the keys to building? Because if you're a coach or trainer, it's part of what you're doing. What are the keys to building a really good, tight community? 
I think I, I think Jordan's better than me at this, candidly. But one thing that I always did was focused on helping each individual for free with no expectations. Mm. So it's not like someone asks a question in my DM and I'm answering it because I want to convert them into a paying coaching client. And this might be a mindset Gary helped instill, but replying to every comment, replying to every message, replying to every email from non-paying individuals, you know, when you're first getting started and you have time to do this and actually help them, that might mean jumping on a 15 minute call for free. That might mean going back and forth and DM for a half hour, sending voice memos back and forth. Um, But you know, you're talking about helping those 10 people. It's focusing on what's right in front of you and building real relationships by helping that person with the problem they're going through. And then, you know, that doesn't do it anything, quote unquote, in a month or in six months. But after a number of years of doing that consistently, you're going to have a community. That's gold. And it it compounds. Like you have, I, I can't stress this enough that and I, this happens and it's so great when you've done this for 10 years, it happens every day now for us where it's like somebody who I helped out for free seven years ago yep. told seven other people yes. how incredible I was. Mm-hmm. And all seven of those people bought five different programs. And, and it's like, yes. even mm-hmm. though that person never got anything from me, it's so weird. that's okay mm-hmm. because that person, the ROI on that person for that 15 minutes that I spent right. giving that free information to or like that ended up paying me. 10x that of of my time and so well no, that's that's gold what's 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 weird is that the the online social media space has has made people believe that it's bastardized that that it's it's somehow different than the, than the way business was always done like if i owned a gym and 10 people commented on my gym or my exercise or me training someone like i wouldn't ignore them correct mm-hmm. that's like a real person like, i'm gonna talk to you and help you out Somehow, social media world has made people be like, "Oh, it's a comment," like, yeah. and it's a like, like, who cares? Like, uh-huh. that's a person. Uh-huh. That's yeah. a person that that's so weird. Or they lead. just give like the thumbs up in yeah. response. It's like, what could you imagine? Like in real life, someone <laughs> if I came up to you and I'm like, like ah, "Hey, man, hey, that's a yeah. great you know thing yeah. you're doing Too with your client." Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolute like, douche. Guy. <laughs> it's so annoying. It's I like know. take the time to reply. One thing. It's so funny <clears throat> thinking back the stuff that we used to do, like when we had time, when like time is your advantage. Like I used to when I was coaching Gary and I was flying everywhere, waiting in airports, I would post on my story. I'd be like, Hey, if you need help with X, Y, or Z, like DM me your phone number. And I get people DMing me. And then I would call people at the airport and I would just like call them and be like, Hey, what's going on? And people would lose their shit, but like for free. And <clears throat> now I see so many people being like, I need to get paid what I'm worth. I'm like, fuck off. Like you are worth <laughs> nothing period. <laughs> like, and then for you to think that you yeah. just deserve to get paid so early on, it's like, it's disgusting. It's like, if you give something for free to a lot of people for a long time, like it will come back to you a hundredfold. Bro, yeah. I, okay, yep. this is, this gets to me every time. Okay, so Doug, do you know what year it was when I did the Prime Pro webinar? It was at least what, three, four or five years ago? It's How gotta long? be like, four, it's gotta be four, four or five. Okay, four yeah. years ago, uh, I, I did this uh, free webinar and it was, uh, I think we titled it like How to Eliminate Back Pain or something like that. But basically it was, a 50 minute mobility workout that I used to do to my clients. And I have told every trainer that I meet and come across, and I don't know how many thousands of trainers we've now talked to in person and stuff. And I ask every time, and I've said on the podcast fucking 50 plus times, do you do that webinar for free for people on the weekends to generate leads? And none of them ever do it. And I've been telling them, steal it, literally take my shit, (laughs) give it away for free on Saturdays and tell people, and like you lead it, like literally rob it. Don't even change anything. Take exactly how I coach, what I talk about, what I I do in that 50 minutes and do it for people for free. And you will blow their minds because they'll come to that class. I guarantee. And I used to do this thing where I would make these leads come in and I would say, all right, everybody, no warm up, no nothing. I'd be like, let's do 10 body weight squats. And you see this like, you know, <laughs> can't barely get down, heels all rising, shifting all over the place, just a fucking mess, right? And then I take them through this class. One, we're just doing mobility, but yet they're sweating. It's difficult. You're grunting, they're growing. And at the end, I go 10 squats and they all go, Oh my God. Yeah. You all of a sudden move through this yeah. new range of motion. And like instantly You're a magician. <laughs> I make I build credibility in what I can do. Yes. And there's nothing as a trainer like, like you cannot uh lose 10 pounds or build five pounds of muscle in a workout or even a month's workout. Right. 
But teaching somebody like corrective movements like that or mobility you drills. You can take pain away in one You session. can eliminate yes. or at least like damp, dampen the pain signals that these people have or get them to move better mm -hmm. than what they just were. And that's so powerful. And increase their confidence. Yes. Immediately. Yeah. And, and to offer that for free, yeah. like as a value add. And then the fact that I've created it for you and then I tell you to steal it and do it. And then the trainers still don't do it. It's like, I want to ring, I want to choke you every time. You, you just you, said, you just said something too earlier, uh, Jordan, you said, um, you have the advantage of time. Mm. So talk about that for a second, because people just getting started, they like to think about, you know, all the stuff that they don't have. Like, yep. I don't have, uh, you know, I have a, a presence. I don't have stuff that's out there, but they have something that all of us don't really have anymore, Correct. which is a tremendous advantage, which is time. Yeah. What can you do with that? We talk about this all the time where it's like people look at those with a, a bigger audience and say, oh, if only I had that, if only I had that. But like one of the number one things a client will say is I don't, I just don't want to feel like a number. And like one of the worst things a client can say in your program is I just felt like a number. I felt like you didn't really know me. And when you don't have a big audience <clears throat> and you don't, and you do have a lot of extra time, if he, there's no reason any client should ever just feel like a number, right. you should be going over the top over delivering for every single person. And when you do that for free, I mean, you are going to build an outrageously loyal following. I have people in the inner circle who've been, who were actually in-person clients of mine in like 2011, 2012, and they've just continuously been my clients in one way, shape or form. It's like you're, the advantage of time gives you the opportunity to speak with people at a level that the people who don't have as much time, they lose out on that. And That's like, right. you can take advantage of it. Yeah. yeah. When, yeah. when you're spending time at that level, whether it's making content or talk about you know. when you uh, sent the the email to do people's macros and like, remember when you did this yeah, for free? Yeah. So <coughs> this was, I actually think this was maybe the day after Christmas in 2015, Gary's family was on a vacation. I flew down and uh, was coaching him, but had, you know, the entire <laughs> rest of the day, bless you, outside of coaching him. And I sent like a Christmas present. I'll do your macros for free. Like I'll run them through my calculator. I didn't have, you know, I could have just published it, but I didn't have that. It was just like, you know, if you're looking to get after it here in the new year, I'll let you know kind of your calorie range and where you should be. And I sent this to my email list. Um, With a lot of freaking people on it. <laughs> yeah. I already know what happened. I already know what happened right here. Keep going. Go tell, tell yeah, the story. The, and probably a thousand people replied <laughs> oh, no. and wanted me to do their macros. And oh, so no. I spent like... The 27th, 28th, 29th, I mean, I probably spent six to eight hours a day for those days individually wow. doing these people's. And I had a little nutrition program <clears throat> and then there were four or five spots where I'd plug it in, something different for each person and sent each one. There was no automation that I knew of at the time, but emailed each person individually. And uh, people were very grateful and excited. And I don't know, maybe 10 people then became clients yeah. as a result of <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. That's, uh, you, when you have the time, this is, I mean, someone, one of the trainers pushed back on me, like, why don't I do that anymore? Well, I said, well, you know, Mind Pump onboards 250 people a day. Like <laughs> me hosting a 30 person in, in person webinar is just not going to translate. Our right. time's better spent. But when you got it, you got to be taking advantage of it. It just yes. drives me crazy when I'm talking to these <clears throat> trainers. And they're like training one client a day. And then the rest of the day, they're not doing a bunch of free stuff. It's yes. like, have you ever heard uh, um, Brett Contreras' story? Do you know that he does? Do you know to this day he's he never charged people for free? Everyone he trains oh, is free. Really? Told yeah. me that. Yeah. Everyone he trains that. is free. That's crazy. That's wild. Yeah. Yes. So well, I mean, it makes sense when you see what he yeah. does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't mean yeah, like. Let's that, be honest. It's not hard to do the Lord's work. work. That's yeah. not what I meant. Your clients are all booty models. Yeah. That's not what I meant. Yeah. He makes his revenue through other other ways, but his. But I just thought that was such a great. When we interviewed him, I didn't know that, and he brought that up, and I thought that was so fascinating that you know, especially someone with his clout now. I mean, he could probably charge a thousand dollars an hour Easy. and get it yeah. get it for people and yet he's chosen to make money what about uh and what's his name Saladino? he uh trains celebrities oh yeah don, don used to do this oh, thing. Yeah, 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 so, you yeah. know, don has trained for sure the out, out of all the trainers i've met in my life that guy's a -list. more a-list celebrities yeah. than anybody I've ever met Ryan and, reynolds and, and, and all yeah, yeah oh, and tons. When, they, when they would train with him they'd be like oh you want to do you want to do a selfie that you could post on social media he goes no 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 man i just i just want to train you and people these celebrities are like what yeah yeah and so of course he's Genius. getting referred of course he's going to grow his business well and then he would do this so he would he told me i was like you know like how did you how did you charge and he's like you know what i do is i would tell him don't worry about it just just get me when we're done with that he wouldn't charge them and he would just allow the like all the sessions to compound and then they'd be like hey i, got, I gotta pay you he's like oh yeah just send me whatever you want and he just <laughs> he would just let them choose 
And it fucking paid off big time. Wow. Because he goes, you know, he would he would get random stuff like this where Ryan Reynolds is also, because Ryan is a big entrepreneur guy too, right? So he's got, you know, he's yeah. selling companies and cashing out hundreds of millions. He said, he, he, he Ryan would call him up and be like, hey, check your, uh, check your bank account. <laughs> And really? Just, yes. Stop it. Are you just see fucking <laughs> big old thing. I'm like, bro, that is so, take away clothes. You know what I'm saying? Tell <laughs> these people clothes, like, no, yeah. no, no, it's okay. It's a privilege to train you and stuff like that. Just take care of me later. That's why you got to have passion. Whenever you keep That's it. That's awesome. If you don't have that, passion, dude, you just like, chase some money. That's so gangster. Well, and the work. staying that power is, of that, right? If you look at the people who are doing this and they're still around and doing amazing 10, 15, 20 years later. Yeah. It works. Yeah. yeah obviously, they're on to something, right? Yeah, yes, that's exactly. Right. That's well, amazing. I didn't well, know that story. Oh, it's what great. A beast. It's yeah. great. Right? Well, I tell you guys, we appreciate you guys a lot. We really Thank think you. you guys do a phenomenal job. Likewise. And, um, you know, we want to continue to just help elevate people like you guys. And we love what you guys do for the space and trainers and coaches. So trainers and coaches listening, this, these these guys are legit. They're yeah, best people website to get into yeah, the pro program. We're... Guys, we're yeah. Yeah. Fitnessbusinessmentorship.com. Okay. That's the URL. Excellent. Cool. Excellent. And thank and we, you guys. we couldn't recommend you guys more. So yep. yeah, we really appreciate it. Yeah. Of you guys, thank like you. we said, like you guys have inspired us tremendously and you're the whole reason why we started our podcast. And so, um, f- truly thank you so much. So you guys are amazing and we love you and we appreciate you. Thanks thank you guys. guys.